21st, and it is uh, 6.01 p.m. Um, all other persons are present. And the next item on their agenda is to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and silent prayer in lieu of invocation. Amen. Our next item is the reading of the minutes of the previous meeting held on August 17th. What are your wishes? We have a motion by Bemke. Second by Matt. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please cast your ballots. That motion carried, eight A's, zero nays. Uh, item five is consider an appointment of, a me of members to the ad hoc redistricting committee. Did you want to start with that, Attorney Schill? Or, or? So we need to do redistricting, and I believe, I think the county, did you approve your tentative plan this morning? So you will be or have already sent that plan to us, to the city. So now the city needs to uh, draw its ward boundaries and based on the supervisory districts that the county has drawn, it will require some of our wards, uh, more than likely require some of our wards to be adjusted somewhat. So what happens, and I had sent you a memo on that. Um, regarding the timeline, it's, it's a, a compressed timeline because of the pandemic and the, uh, the late release of the census information. So uh, what we're looking for is a redistricting committee. It could be solely made up of other persons. It, you could add community members to it. I believe the county just had uh, supervi supervisors on there redistricting committee, uh, we would need to, well, you'll have sta t staff support of Justin Connor, who is our GIS coordinator, because there's some really fancy software that needs to be manipulated to change the, to change the wards and, and show us the different populations in the wards. And uh, also Clerk Gossick and myself would also be assisting the committee. We would probably start meeting next week um, we have about three or four weeks to get this done. Um, and I thank the county for getting it to us uh, timely and allowing us a good number of weeks to get it done. It should not, I wouldn't think it would take too long. As I said, there's not a whole lot of uh, movement between the more wards, but there are some boundaries that will need to be changed so that we can uh, kind of hold down our number of different ballots that we have for, for different wards and supervisory districts. Um, and then once we have a plan, we send that over back to the county and then they will uh, draft a, a final plan and then uh, we would draw our aldermanic districts, which are basically our couple of our wards together to make up each of your districts, we probably would do that pretty much simultaneously with the um, drawing the wards <clears throat> to make sure that our supervisory districts and our, I'm sorry, our aldermanic districts are uh, pretty even. So that's what we need to do. Does anyone need any more inf information about redistricting or why or how? Um, I sent you the link to the map that the county has drawn as well as their web page which has a lot of good information regarding redistricting. So what I'm looking for is uh, the creation of a, an ad hoc redistricting committee. Um, after I'd sent the memo I had uh, received an email from other person, person Rayom requesting to set up a legislative committee for a number of matters that we have on our calendar for that and uh, then I was thinking well why 
I should have just suggested that maybe the redistrict committee be the legislative committee. Uh, so I guess that's an option if you're if you're uh, if you want to have one of the uh, make the legislative committee be the redistricting committee because they're probably going to meet soon anyways. But that's really up to you. Well, that's if they, yeah. right, if, if they want community members on. Um, I believe you have some letters of interest from some folks. Um, but it's not necessary. It's open to the public. Everything will be noticed. We'll, in, you know, if observers want to be there, we, they can see the whole process. So. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, this is a process that comes up every 10 years, and uh, it's a very important one. And it's, uh, in some sense, a difficult one, and in some sense, not. Uh, we had a lot of help on it uh, from the county and that, uh, but as Sue said, it's, uh, the meetings are open to the public. I think, however, we end up with tonight that uh, if it's just uh, members of the council, that uh, that is fine. If, it's, uh, if there are citizens members on it, I, I feel that the majority of the council should be, uh, of the committee should be uh, council members. And I think the majority should be, or the maximum should be five, because that's a a good number to work with. And I also, um, I do uh, think that it may be, uh, you know, I'm willing to listen to whatever input comes from the council, so I'm just starting here with this tonight. Um, it may be something for the uh, legislative uh, committee that it may be something uh, for them to tack on, take on and then to see uh, if that's what the makeup of the committee is or added to that. Uh, it's just I think that that's, um, I think that's a good way at least to start the dis discussion tonight. Um, uh, I think that probably the old, <laughs> uh, it's been 10 years, but I think the only ones maybe that are left here that had any part in the one 10 years ago, I think, were the attorney, the mayor, and myself. And Jason. Uh, so, uh, up from the council standpoint. Uh, so, uh, and as Sue mentioned, uh, the county came up with theirs and just uh, went with the supervisors on their uh, committee. And so that's, uh, at least for now, uh, Mr. Mayor, that uh, I guess I think uh, that's all I have to say for right, right now to start with. So I'll we'll see where we go with the discussion on it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Pemke. So, so what has this committee looked like in the past? Has it been? I don't recall. We we were trying to, we we found the minutes from ten years ago, and it it just listed who was all there. It didn't really even list the committee members. It was the clerk and I. Um, Jason. Jay, whoops, Jason from the county. Um, there was someone from the League of Women Voters. Um, who else was there? Uh -huh. But we could not find anything where the 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 council actually created this committee, um, so we all just kind of worked together. It was a little more primitive back then with the the mapping, I think, and now it's I think. Uh, well, I, I don't know. I haven't. <laughs> Jason spent a lot of time with it. Uh, uh, so yeah, and I honestly I I could not remember, and we kind of tried to find the history of that, but. 
Well, well, and I think we just had one, did we just meet maybe once and hammered it out? Or was there a couple meetings? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. So when did you say this had to be done by? Um, the timeline, uh, which I didn't bring my memo. No, uh, November 2nd. Okay. Yes. For wards, yeah. Right. Third, third Tuesday in October, probably. Right. I think that, yeah, the plan was the third Tuesday in October at the council meeting to be completed. That's it, yeah, thank you. Uh -uh. Mr. Benjamin. So um, how, how much time, um, this is probably a question for Jennifer, right? when did we send out to the public um, the opportunity to submit these resumes? Or letters of intent, or, or you want to so I sent um, I sent an email to the Democratic Party of Wood County and the Republican Party of Wood County and the League of Women Voters uh, last week. And we received three, or three. Yes. Well, I guess yeah. if my feeling is if we are going to include the public, doesn't seem like enough time to look for other candidates or so is that basically the generally what we would do we would send it to the legal women voters that there's no public announcement of this and that yeah. well I guess the, the notice it's off of the meeting would have you know mentioned the appointment to a redistricting committee but no there was nothing other than that done there's nothing official that's sent out to ask the public if yeah. they're interested in it um you may not choose to even have any members of the public that's why i was right. wondering if we if we just um if we, we really haven't surveyed the public to find out if they're interested yeah um then. we picked the two politi major political parties in the league of women voters um that's basically what we did so <clears throat> But this is a nonpartisan I understand process. That. Absolutely. I understand. Mm -hmm. Good you. Thank you. And uh, city attorney just hit on it. I think since this is a nonpartisan situation and decision, and we're all of nonpartisan offices, I think it should be handled by us rather than these two major political parties uh, without representation from other political parties so I think this could be handled by us here on the council and city staff members so with that I, I'll entertain a motion that we use the legislative committee and what was it last time the city attorney and the city clerk we were just providing staff assistance we wouldn't actually be on the committee would be my recommendation so it could be the three elder persons would would make up the committee then. Okay. Oh, he's staff. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, so I'll entertain a motion then that we forward this to the legislative committee as the ad hoc committee for the redistricting. We have a motion by Jake, second by Tom. I see Josh out in the audience has his hand up and you wish to speak would somebody be willing to recognize him okay we, go ahead Josh Just state your name please Josh make sure the <laughs> microphone's on the green light Jack, yep there we go greetings my name is Joshua Shu. I'm a member of Wisconsin Rapids and my question concerned this um, whole ad hoc Redistricting community is what is its true purpose and how, why is it only once every 10 years? Did you want to take it? Come here. Oh, if you want, Doc. Sure, I can. So, uh, Josh, every uh, 10 years we do the census, and based on that census, it changes, you know, population shift. And so when we try to um, elect a representative, we try to have equal districts. 
So in the city, our wards are roughly equal to the same size then. And every 10 years, we have to reset that. And that's why we do it every 10 years following that census. So there's equal representation. That's the goal. Okay. Interesting. Hmm. And last question, if I may. Go ahead. Um. Did you forget it? How would one go about as to like asking to like be part of this redistricting committee? So that's what they were just talking about. So they made a motion, um, Mr. Catnaw there made a motion to um, use our legislative committee, which is, consists of our chairman from our public works, our finance, and our human resource committee to be the representatives on that committee to make that decision. But those, mo those meetings will be noticed so the public will be able to attend and watch that process. You're welcome, Josh. Uh, any further discussion? We have a motion and a second on the floor. Seeing none, then please cast your ballots. That motion carried eight A's, zero nays. All right, we are on to item six. Consider a resolution extending the emergency declaration proclamation regarded the, regarding the COVID-19 pandemic. See attachment two. Mr. Delaney. I would like to know if there's any uh, set of matrix that you guys are using for this or how you're coming up with uh, this plan here. So as far as I know, there is no matrix established. Uh, HR committee has had some, they have a regular item on their agenda, but they haven't set like a standard where, you know, when we hit this percent, this will happen. Um, I think right now, my personal opinion is that, you know, with our Zoom option, should something catastrophically start happening, we can meet by Zoom if we need to have a meeting. And so I, I don't see a necessity at this point to have any metrics to start enacting things. But we're enacting this now. I mean, shouldn't it come from... Uh, logically based set of matrix oh. and not just for you mm -hmm. i appreciate you as mayor i think you've done an excellent job i'm thinking for future generations when something like this comes up that we have something that we can look at uh, as to how it affects the city county and uh and that yeah, and I think that's something that this body can set. Um, I don't think that it's something that you can hold future councils to. You know, I think we have to go, you know, incident by incident, because as I've heard through the many years, you know, your, this council can govern itself how they choose to do so. So I don't think setting something for the future, but I think discussing and, and setting what you want to do currently is something within the realm that you can do. Anything further? You're good? Okay. Mr. Bemke. So just a couple things. One is this, this is brought up every month, so we're going to look at this every month. I guess my feeling is, is if something were to happen, and because this is all brand new to everybody, and it gives the city a chance to react, Mayor has their, Shane as our mayor, a chance to react, I don't know what's going to happen, maybe nothing. But we do review this every month. We did suspend this for four or five months that we didn't have it. Um, I think based on information we were getting from the Wood County Health Department, we just decided it was a good idea to do it again. So um, that's where we're at with this. Thank you. Good. 
Lucas, what are your wishes? So we have a motion by Bemke, second, second. by Austin. Um, any further discussion? Seeing none, please cast your ballots. That motion carried six A's, two nays. On to item seven is consider a preliminary resolution to initiate discontinuance of a portion of Avon Street pursuant to section 66.1003 of the Wisconsin statutes as requested by Wood, um, Wood County as part of the jail expansion. See attachment three. Do you want to? Go ahead, Tom. Just uh, a question, Mayor, and maybe I'm not understanding. <laughs> but on the Planning Commission, which comes after this, item 9 or 10, Yep. Uh, they postponed any action. So, I mean, that goes with this, doesn't it? Uh, uh, that we really wouldn't. Well, they we really wouldn't do anything with this, would we? This evening. Right. Well, this is the first step in the street discontinuance process there's an initial resolution then it's sent to planning it's sent to public works then we have a public hearing and a final resolution in probably two months from now so uh, the other the rezoning the site plan review those are all kind of happening contemporaneously and 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 because one thing was held over it's my understanding it's still coming back they're still going to pursue the project so that'll probably come back in the next month yeah. Um, but this is going to be at least a two-month process as it is, so that's... Yeah. And, and I understand that, but the, the, the process of the rezoning, if by chance that that wouldn't happen, this becomes null and void. Right. This is just to start the proceedings. It's not to approve of the vacation. No, no it's not to approve that, but this is, to me it's kind of putting what the hind feet of the horse in front of the front feet again because of what the action that the Planning Commission took. If the Planning Commission had approved that to put that into motion, then I could see this. But the Planning Commission, because of what's recommended by city staff to ensure adherence to the requirements for consistency with the city's comprehensive plan. So not saying that it won't happen, but we're kind of jumping ahead now, I think. It's a, uh, and I know, that, and that's why I'm, I'm somewhat confused. I don't think I am, but uh, it's also because I, I just, uh, I don't know how you can really put something into motion when you haven't, when we haven't decided to put the first block on that permit to get going. It's a, I just, I think this has to, I think this would have to wait until after a future commission meeting. So I think Kyle can probably explain it better, but technically with the zoning on that proper property currently, it would be this use would be allowed on that property with the current existing zoning. Correct, Kyle, if you want to kind of explain a little bit further, but. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, that's correct, that the, the current zoning actually uh, would permit uh, a public uh, safety facility. Um, so the the requests that are being made by the county are numerous. Um, there are several. There will be about four or five with regards to compliance with all city ordinances. 
the street vacation is one of the four or five requests and it, it somewhat stands alone on its own. It, it is not uh, in relation to the rezoning. Um, uh, rezoning of the property isn't necessarily a review criteria for the street vacation. Uh, and the street vacation is one of the lengthier processes under statute by which the county has to pursue. It's typically a 90 day to 120 day process to vacate a street. Uh, in regards again to the state statute, we have to do an introductory resolution. Uh, we then cannot act on the item for 40 days and, and in between that time, we do list pendants to notify the surrounding property owners. Um, and so this, this uh, Introductory resolution is just that. It's just to introduce the item so that plan commission and common council in the future, 40 days can now can actually review the item and act on the item. So if the zoning ultimately, or there's a hang up with planning, this can be, I guess, technically voted, voted down at a later date, but it just gets those, those timelines started. I, I do want to note too that with regards to the next steps, um, the county is looking to have a uh, more formal presentation where they're going to introduce some additional information in October regarding the project, more of a, a formal presentation to council. Um, and you can expect that uh, at the, I believe it'll be the October 19th uh, council meeting. And along with that, staff will also outline all of the steps for approval uh, that they'll be making a request for the project. Have we, uh, and I don't I guess necessarily need an answer tonight, but it's being looked into where that, uh, where that does fall within, or the, as far as the, you know, the planning commission, what they did there with the comprehensive plan has that been looked at, what uh, all that, what that part entails? Yes, so uh, part of the, uh, the meeting on the 19th will be to take action on the future land use map as well as the rezoning. Uh, and there'll be a formal presentation prior to action on those items at the council meeting, well at the plan commission meeting which will take place prior to council. I believe all of you were notified of that, uh, of that meeting um, or the potential special meeting that'll occur for plan commission prior to council. Um, that's again to stay on the timeline for all of the approvals, the street vacation, uh, what would be the eventual conditional use permit and the site plan review process. Um, so the point I'm making is over the course of the next uh, three to five months, there will be several items that'll come before plan commission and or common council for review and approval. Mr. Austin. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion to approve a preliminary resolution to initiate discontinuance of a portion of Avon Street. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? I, uh, sorry. Josh has his hand up again if somebody wants to recognize it. Did you? Go ahead, Josh. We're glad you're participating. Uh huh. Okay. Um, Joshua Shu, and considering that this is passed, if this thing goes into motion, like in the next few months, won't what's going to stop? Won't winter stop this from? like getting completed at a sooner date than if we wait till like spring per se? So the project probably isn't slated to start till spring. It's just the, I hate to say the busy government work behind the scenes to get everything in line to be able to start the process in okay. five or six months. We're not always fast, <laughs> but we will be efficient. I appreciate the. Uh, Thank you, Josh. The lack of slowness in this case. We don't want to rush anything through, so. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome, Josh. Uh, Mr. Delaney. Um, could this be set aside and then uh, reviewed by the planning committee? I share Tom Rayom's uh, 
viewpoint on this. Um, why is it brought up here at the Common Council and not first at the committee? Because there needs to be an initial resolution by the uh, by the council first, and then that's the referral back to Planning Commission. It doesn't originate it at the Planning Commission. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, please cast your ballots. That motion carried seven A's, one nay. All right, we're on to item eight, which is a public comment review of the transportation utility ordinance. Whoops. Um, I think, why don't we start, Mr. Ike said, do you have something you would like to start with? And then what we'll do is open the public comment and give everybody an opportunity that wishes to speak to speak. And then um, there is no action tonight, and that was by design. But we wanted everybody to have the opportunity to have some input, follow up discussion over the next month, and then before next meeting, before the vote happens at the next meeting in October. Go ahead, Joe. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll just go through a quick introduction and some background information on the transportation utility. Um, the city's been working on. Um, looking at different funding sources for the transportation system uh, since uh, early 2020. Some of the goals that the city identified uh, early on, um, primarily to reduce or eliminate special assessment costs for street and sidewalk reconstruction projects, uh, reduce or eliminate borrowing for annual reconstruction projects, and then also advance towards a sustainable transportation system. So the transportation utility fund is um, you know, the, the, the method that kind of meets the, the goals that were, were identified. And a transportation utility is really a user-based um, funding source that looks at the users of the transportation, uh, transportation network through uh, the number of trips that vehicles make to and from specific properties. And the way that the the models developed for the entire city and every every property is reviewed and assigned based upon its property type how many trips that it would typically generate to the property and from the property and those values uh, are used to generate the the funds uh, for the utility So it's, it's a basic introduction. Um, you know, we've got the ordinance, draft ordinance that was reviewed and, and um, recommended by the Public Works Committee uh, that's also um, draft was provided this evening. I, I see some people in the audience that might have specific questions on cost. And I guess to maybe ask that question ahead of time. Yeah. And I know some council people have asked also, we are the plan is not together fully to be able to, I guess, release the cost for each property classification at this point. Um, but, you know, at some point soon, hopefully, you know, that, that's part of the overall discussion and vote, I would think, is, is those costs. And, and that's not been prepared yet, correct? That's, that's correct. We're, the model's at about 85 to 90 percent complete. And, um, Although we, we anticipate that the number, total number of trips generated in the city will decrease, which um, may or may not have an impact on the, f the final trip rate, um, the model isn't complete on a property-specific level. So although we do have some examples that, that I could run through and share with everybody um, to give you a, a sense of, of uh, you know, different property classes and, and what those fees might, might look like, uh, for single-family properties, um, they're all they're all assigned the same the same number of trips. It's approximately nine trips per residential property. Uh, they have a uh, estimated again these are approximate fees um, about seven dollars per month. Um, thousand square foot square foot office building uh, has a ten dollar and fifty cents approximately per month fee. 
and manufacturing facility that um, has a unit of 10,000 square feet, approximately around $4 per month. Uh, fast food restaurants, um, if you have a 1,000 square foot fast food restaurant, approximately in the $200 per month range. Um, and we've got a few other scenarios that we've got some, some data on. But um, the cost per trip, um, each trip I think is it's under two cents per trip. So that's looked at on an annual basis, which works out to about $5.92 a trip annually. Thank you. And then do we have any indication of when that final table will be available? So that you know the, the public can kind of look at that well in advance of the next meeting and, and formulate some questions. So if uh, once once the ordinance is approved or if it's approved, um, staff would proceed with finalizing the, that last 10 to 15 percent of the properties. Um, part of the issue is taking a close look at each of those properties and making sure that we're reviewing the actual use and assigning the right property class to that to that property. So the intent would be that we would be assuming that if things were approved in October that we could start um, implementing and billing the utility in January of 2022. So is it potential that the ordinance could be presented next month without a table available? And would that table come back then to council to be approved? And at that point, the council could approve or deny that cost associated table, which then ultimately would potentially null and void the transportation utility if council wasn't comfortable with those fees? Yeah, so the, the table A, which is um, a drafted in with the, with the ordinance language, um, that has the rates defined in it, and those would be, um, they may or may not need to be updated um, prior to initiating, but certainly they could be brought back and, and adjusted. Yeah, I, I, I guess I can't speak for council, but I would think the concern would be, you know, not knowing property classifications and the cost for those classifications prior to approving the ordinance might be concerned. I, I can't speak for them. Um, so why don't we open up the public hearing? Um, I guess afterwards there's not really a debate because there's no decision going to be made. But I think if there's some questions that need to be asked, um, we can allow time for that. Um, our finance director is unavailable tonight. Um, he doesn't have much of a voice, so he, he's not participating. So some of those financial questions, he will not be available. And I think maybe with the public hearing, it might present some questions that staff doesn't have the answer to. But if we can somehow get contact or we'll have contact information and we try to follow up. So if there's an unanswered question, we'll, we'll get an answer to you. All right. So let's open the public hearing at 6.39 p.m. And what I'll do is uh, I'll offer to anybody who wishes to speak against the utility. Everybody that wants to speak will be given that opportunity. We're requesting about three minutes, and then um, we'll move on to the next person. But when you come up to the podium, state your name and your address, and then you can speak you know, against or for when we get to that point, and everybody will be heard. So does it, I'll call for the first time. Does anybody wish to speak against the transportation utility ordinance? Go ahead, John. Start with John, and then we'll continue on. Uh, John Bergen, 4411 Quarry Circle, Wisconsin Rapids. Uh, really not for or against, but uh, asking for information. Uh, concerned about the spending side of the ordinance, okay? Uh, hypothetical. Uh, you are going to annex a large area to the city. Will this fund be used to cover the costs for street, water, sewer, curb, uh, 
gutter and so on for that Initial annex. Longer. What? I guess I would be concerned that uh, someone is able to take advantage of that without uh, having to pay for that themselves. Why should the ratepayers of Wisconsin Rapids pay for someone who's going to be annexed? And how does the ordinance address that? Joe, do you have an answer for that at this point? Because we hadn't discussed that, uh, that I recall. Not in, not in great detail, but um, I guess if, if an area is to be annexed, then you know, at such time that they're annexed, they would, they would be part of the city um, in that you know, the, the transportation utility as a whole um, would be adjusted as, as necessary. Um, I guess, you know, it'd be assuming that the existing infrastructure that's in that annexed area, you know, is on average, um, you know, this, the same sort of condition of, of most streets. Um, but I guess if, if, if you're referring to a large um, piece of annexed land that's vacant, uh, what we would, any new developments that would have new streets related to a proposed development um, that would that would likely be um, a case where you know the, the developer would be um, fronting those costs or through otherwise through a development agreement with the city. Well, I would advise that the ordinance be carefully written around that so that the uh, annexed area uh, does in fact support the cost of the additional street and utility work. <clears throat> I guess another question, once uh, you have a uh, socialized setup, it's subject to uh, abuse. And are there going to be standards in the ordinance uh, so that the type of street follows a plan and that there's not a way to, am I doing something wrong? No, it's a good timer. You're fine, go ahead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Uh, thought maybe someone was gonna come with a hammer here in a minute or two. Not yet. Okay, so it seems that there needs to be a standard so that there is not a uh, privileged status achieved through this socialized uh, kitty, if you will, that's used for transportation issues. And does the ordinance address that issue? Those are my questions. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, who else had their hand? Go ahead, Lee. It, is there a microphone on? Yeah. Is that better now? Yeah. I'm Lee Chipman. I live out in Bancroft, so I don't really have much to say in town. I don't get to vote or anything, but I do own three properties, three own three businesses in Wisconsin Rapids. What's really sad to me is it seems like Wisconsin Rapids is anti-small business, and that's what it's going to hurt. From A Street down to the bridge, there's eight empty buildings sitting. I'm not happy with that. I don't, I'm, if you guys are happy with that, that's on you guys. You keep discouraging small business to thrive, and I don't think you guys understand what a small profit margin there is in small businesses. I have three that I still couldn't make a living at, but I do that because Wisconsin Rapids means a lot to me. And it's hard to believe after two years of pandemic and stuff like this, and we're not back to 2019 yet. We're still not back to 2019's income yet. And I don't think we'll ever get back there. Maybe not. And now you need to increase taxes on, on us? It's, and I haven't seen any numbers yet. Maybe I'm overreacting to life, but the way it looks like, we're, the small business are gonna be carried the blunt of this tax increase. And to me, I know that 
a lot of people that I try to encourage to invest in Wisconsin Rapids. And I hate to say this, it's sad that there's people around here that could could invest back in, in Wisconsin Rapids. Just That just isn't. And that's the sad part. So I just got question. you know, I just want to make sure that you're not focusing on and hurting small businesses. I haven't seen the numbers yet. I'm, you know, I was kind of hoping that there would be numbers here to see for us. How would it affect, you know, my three bars? How would it affect the park? But the way I understand the park, it won't affect that number at all. But I know it hurt. Last year I paid $8,000 of when they did the road there. I knew that, that that was part of being in Wisconsin Rapids. I saved to pay that much. That was part of living in Wisconsin Rapids. When they fixed your road, you had to pay, but you were done for another 20, 25 years. So that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lee. Uh, go ahead, Todd. Good evening, everybody. My name is Todd Ferkey. I live at 2210 Russell Street. And um, it was just a few short years ago that I sat where you are all sitting. And I appreciate your sacrifice, your service, your humbleness. And I'm sure any efforts you make on this front are sincere. What I want to say the city has paid Ari Smith and Ehlers thousands of dollars to tell them what they want to hear. We found a way to circum circumvent the will of the state legislature. We, you don't have to uh, go above your tax limits, your tax revenue raising limits. We got a transportation utility that we can impose on the citizens. And another way we can circumvent the will of the state legislature is we can nail the nonprofits, the food pantries, the churches, the YMCAs. We'll stick it to them, right? They're not supposed to pay real estate taxes. You can call the utility if you want, but it's a tax. A utility, I pay for what I use. If it's electricity, if it's gas, if it's water, I pay for what I use. I don't pay for an average of what you all use. You don't get together and submit your electric bills together and say, let's average them out and we'll, we'll share in an average, right? This is not right. The township of Buchanan is being sued today over a utility such as this. This Kokana, right? They're being sued today. You're looking at uh, subjecting the city of Wisconsin Rapids to this utility, and we don't even know if it's legal. And why are you doing this, right? We heard numbers tonight about a uh, 1,000 square foot fast food was only $200 a month, I think. But three months ago, it was $21,000 a year at the higher level. So when you put in this utility, what level are you putting it in at, right? And once it's in, it goes up or down at the will of you. But it's in forever. It never and ever goes away. And I as a taxpayer, I as a member of a church, I as a business owner, am tired of being subjected to this. Certainly, the special assessments problem needs attention. But there's got to be a better way than this, right? You're looking at millions of dollars a year. Special assessments is three or 400,000. That's something that maybe, as a community, we could swallow, taking care of our neighbors by taking care of the special assessments that are citywide. But these millions of dollars that go to road maintenance and repair, 
that's too much for certainly businesses to handle. And you're telling the city residences, the homeowners, to pacify them, your real estate taxes are probably going to go down because we're going to stick it to these other guys, the businesses, the small businesses, the large businesses. You say City Hall is going to pay for it. Also, schools are going to pay for it. Who, who funds City Hall? Who funds the schools? It's, it's us out here, right? What about the courthouse? Are they going to pay for it? The, the county garage with all the big dump trucks and stuff like that, they tear up the road a lot more than my pickup truck does, right? There's got to be a better way. And please, please think about this before you make a final decision because I, I really think you're going to get a lot, of, a lot of unhappy citizens. Thank you. Thank you, Todd. Go ahead, sir. Is your microphone on? Is your microphone on? Um, on the bottom of the micro, John. Can. Thank you. I live on Chase Street. They just got done with the new street and curb and gutter and everything. Forced us into sidewalk that nobody wanted. Now you're coming up with this tax, and it will just nothing but go up. I do not see any reason why you don't go with a wheel tax like Stevens Point and Provers got and other cities. That way, some of these people that got five, six cars parked in their driveway, they're going to pay whatever it is, $25 or whatever it is per vehicle. How can you figure out how many times I'm going to go out of my driveway? If that isn't the silliest thing I ever heard of, thank you. Sir, can you state your name? Sir. What is your name? Your name. What? Can you state your name for the record? I need to. Thank you. 2020 Chase Street. Thank you. Thank you. Um, go ahead, sir. Is this on? Apparently. Okay. My name is Leon Schmidt. I live in the city at 2311 River Birch Lane. I own a law practice located at the corner of uh, East Grand and Third, next to the movie, next to the theater. Um, I essentially, I really just kind of heard about this uh, this afternoon, and I wasn't sure. Um, to what extent the really the information is really out there that has been mentioned as far as how the funding is going to occur on this project that was mainly the interest I had as far as what how the funding would be handled I've got the concern that the previous speakers also raised as far as as far as putting the burden for this funding on our businesses <laughs> Wisconsin Rapids uh, has for some considerable period of time not had a um, reputation of being extremely supportive of the business community. Uh, and we've had, as we all know, for many, many decades, the support of the paper making industry. Um, and so maybe we didn't worry that much as far as the business community. But the business community now, these small businesses we have, the jobs they provide and the services we provide are as important or more important than they've ever been in the past. And if we make those businesses carry uh, an excess, a, a larger share of the cost of the service the community in general is getting, um, then uh, that is a counterproductive and has been pointed out, some businesses really don't have a significant margin that they're working on for their uh, for for their pro to have, to have a profit to be able to continue, um, some of these things I heard, and I'm not sure if it's 
if we're actually going to have something announced so people in general know specifically what we're talking about to comment on, like this a trip charge apparently related to parking lot use, where, for example, I have three parking lots, uh, one small one next to my business, uh, one small one on the other side, or another parking lot on the other side of the daily, Fritz, the old Fritzinger Daily Building, and also one big parking lot behind my office. Well, at night, the big parking lot is used by the theater visitors. In the day, my parking lot by Fritzinger Daily is used by people going to the post office. So am I supposed to be paying for the post office traffic and the theater traffic? I mean, what, trying to judge things by parking lot use uh, has got problems. Uh, and if all that is, apparently I saw at some point that it would cost $9 a month as a charge on everybody's water bill um, versus these large numbers on a small number of businesses, it seems that it makes more sense to spread it out. And if that's, um, uh, if that is, uh, one could uh, even in the water uh, approach, um, link that to estimated fair market value, for example, to say homes uh, with water bill, homes with water service that have an estimated fair market value be below $60,000, don't get the charge, everything over, some number like that, if there's a question about some of the $9 charge being too much at some level, but it seems an awful lot easier for everybody to handle nine bucks than these numbers that are going to be put on 100 different businesses instead of uh, 10,000 households. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. My name is my name is Rob Jensky, and my wife Amy owns a square bar. She couldn't be here tonight, so I'm here for her. Um, this is so much in the, up in the air as far as fees. I don't know how I, this can go forward at all. Um, said a thousand square foot business, roughly three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars to some thousand square foot business is a lot. If I'm trading gold, that's nothing. If I got a cookie shop or a a small profit margin, that's a lot of money a month. You're talking about increasing my taxes $2,400 a month, or $2,400 a year. That's, and for what? We're over here on the square bar, Side Street Johnson, we got, uh, I've seen the traffic counters out there. There's a thousand cars that drive by there a day that don't stop at my business, or the Union Hall, or Lee's business. He's not even open. But he's gonna pay for them, cars that come through down Baker Drive, up over the Jackson Street Bridge and go to skip, skip the expressway because it takes you 20 minutes to go around town that way. So we're gonna have to pay for all these people too. I have no parking lot. What's, what's my trip fee gonna be? You can't even tell me that before. This is going to, to vote next month and you can't even tell people what, what the price is gonna be. I don't, I don't get it, how, how it can be legal. Um, the, the $9 a month, doesn't seem like much to a homeowner, but you know where that's going to go is right on the renters in town. The homeowner, the, the property owners aren't going to accept that. They're going to pass that on to the people that can't afford it. Um, there just seems so much in here that up in the air that I, I would I would think that you'd want a better plan before you take it take it forward. I, I don't see why October is such a hurry. If it could be worked on and there could be more out. This not everybody gets a newspaper anymore because no one likes how they do their billing. I, 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 it's, if you don't read it in the paper, you don't see it anywhere. This is new to a lot of people here tonight. And uh, there's a lot of people that aren't happy. I agree with everything that everyone got up here and said so far. This is, uh, there's, there's just so much. You, uh, you're not charging for parks, recreation, areas, but what about the people driving down the road to get to the park? The business owner's gonna pay for that? You know, they're driving by my business to go somewhere that, that's free, you know, that's not paying. So I gotta, I gotta pay for that, for that. The wheel tax is a better idea. There seems to be that there could be something better than this. It's gonna hurt a lot, a lot of small businesses in town. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 
Go ahead, Carol. Hi, my name is Carol Berna. I live in um, 6020 Magnolia Drive in Wisconsin Rapids, Grand Rapids, but I'm representing the IBW Hall at 220 Johnson Street. And for us, we have people that drive past our building 100 times a day. We have to pay for apparently the county workers that don't have a place to park. That's not fair. We have um, um, just different things that go on. How are you going to decide what a fair trip tax is? The farmer's market, you've got the 4th of July, you've got, um, there's just so many things that go on. How do you, how do you fairly char charge someone? You don't have any idea yet exactly how you're going to do it. Another problem is my mother. She lives at 3251 Washington Street, Unit 6. She's going to have $9 or whatever added onto her fuel bill or her utility bill every month. She's on a fixed income. Half of Rapids, they laugh because it's the, the um, retirement community. This is going to affect a lot of people, a lot of retirement. A lot of retirees have fixed incomes. You have to start thinking about them also because it's not fair to them. They don't drive around all over town. If I come into town and go to work, I may stop at six businesses on the way. So six businesses are going to get charged more because I decided to stop there and give them my local business, or someday I just might drive straight to work at 220 Johnson Street and not stop anywhere. You got to start looking at different people, and you have to start taking into consideration how this is going to affect a lot of people. And it's going to affect a lot of the elderly people also. And I think it's just time that everybody is taxed and taxed and taxed. Food is up. Everything is up. You just can't keep, keep taxing people. And you have to do it fairly. You can't just do it across the board. What happens on 8th Street is not what happens in downtown Wisconsin Rapids. We don't have a downtown Wisconsin Rapids. So I just, I just think I would take it in consideration. If you don't have a fee done before next month, I don't think you should have the right to pass this in October because we're not giving the responsibility to come and present ourselves again on what you're going to charge us. So thank you. Thank you, Carol. Um, is there, is there behind the podium? And then, yeah, and yeah, when this gentleman is done, then. Uh, my name's Dave Greenway. I live in Saratoga, but I'm here to talk for uh, First Baptist Church, uh, 910 McKinley Street. Um, several weeks ago, we all on Ninth Avenue got a letter saying that we're going to have to repair the street which I understand needs repair. Um, the assessment to the church would be approximately $15,000. That's a lot of money for a small church, which we just can't cough up that kind of money. So I agree that this problem needs to be addressed somehow. And the added tax, you know, would be a lot easier to swallow a $50 a month fee, which was what the paper said a church would probably pay than it would be to cough up $15,000. So it would be, as a church standpoint, since we don't pay property tax, we'd be willing to pay something, which we already have in the past paid for sidewalk repair and whatever else goes on, several times over, in fact. But um, there's a lot of people on that street that can't afford to pay that kind of money up front. And uh, this is going to happen next year, I believe, for the street reconstruction. So hopefully, between now and then, something will be taken care of. And each, each individual owner will not have to pay that kind of money. Uh, also, I talked to the guy across the street. There's a vacant lot on the opposite corner. And his lot is worth approximately $4,000. And he's going to be assessed like $12,000 for the street repair. Now, how can you justify that? So I agree with pretty much everything that's been said here tonight that this needs to be addressed. No doubt this problem is a problem, but there has to be a better way. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, sir. Um, real quick, Joe, can you maybe explain a little bit about it's not about the traffic driving by their business? It's, and I'll let you speak in a moment, ma'am. 
I can barely see you back. But, but there seems to be a bit of confusion on how those trips are assessed. It's not because there's counters out there now counting vehicles. Um, yeah, certainly. Um, so, so initially here, I mean, the model to date has been developed using um, a manual that's derived from, uh, it's a trip generation manual through the Institute of Transportation Engineers. It's a national standard manual. It's got thousands of pages, thousands, many thousands of data points statistically laid out uh, to be able to use by engineers to, um, initially it was put together primarily for new developments so that, um, you know, if, if you're building a shopping center or whatever, you can, you can uh, get an idea of what the, the trip generation is for a particular uh, development. Um, so that manual is, is being used to uh, look, at, look at the properties by property type. You know, so if it's a residential property, uh, uh, retail store, com other commercial office space, whatever it might be, and it, the number of trips that are generated are based upon some, some unit factor. Um, so for office space, so how many thousands of square feet of office space do you have, or how many um, uh, thousand square feet of uh, food, food restaurant, you know, how big is your building? Um, so the parking lots don't have anything to do with the calculation, the, the volume of traffic on the streets adjacent to your property don't have anything to do with the calculation. Um, certainly on some properties, trying to find the right property type, uh, how it's being used and how it fits in with the model in the trip generation manual. Um, there's some questions there as, as far as what's the best fit. And that's, those are the properties that haven't been identified yet. So the, the final 10 or 15% of the properties in the city that need a closer look, um, those have to be looked at more closely. To, and it, it wasn't an, an easy, uh, well that property can, we can just slide that right into this property class and, and, and generate a, a reasonable value for that. Um, so that's kind of a summary of that. Is, is that? Thank you. Okay. Uh, I think there, ma'am, in the back there. I think. Yes. Go ahead, please. Sorry, I can't see you back there. I just saw a few fingers, but it was a whole hand. My name is Melissa Polzane. Uh, former business owner of 28 years, 530 Birch Street, Wisconsin Rapids. Thank you for clarifying this because it made it a lot clearer. The street that I live on are almost all retirees, and I, Birch Street runs parallel to East Grand Avenue, and we have lots and lots of traffic. Um, so I guess we should pay a lot more money because people use that street a lot. We don't because we're all retirees there. Anyway, um, my point is not that, but I can remember several years ago when I owned my business, Waterworks and Lighting Commission wanted to build on, so they assessed all of the small businesses $600 they added to our security deposit. All they did was just tell us, pay it. You owe us more money. They gave us 30 days. They didn't tell us why. They just said, do it. And when we questioned them, they said, pay it or we're cutting you off. How unfair. Is this kind of what y'all are doing to us? I, I just want to know, is this some more blackmail? It's, it's just not fair because... Like everybody said, you know, small businesses struggle so hard. We, we work hard every day. We don't do it to get rich. We do it because <laughs> this is what we like to do. And we put our heart and souls into it. 
and you guys keep taxing us and taxing us, but I guess this is what I wanted to say. Please give us a break. Thank you. Josh, do you wish to speak against? I, mean, I just have a serious question concerning all of Then you better come up to the microphone and identify yourself, please. After hearing all these comments concerning the pros and cons on this whole project, a lot of cons there are, I would ask you what pros are there for this? So right now, Josh, there's, this is a public hearing, so we're listening to all the people that are speaking against this, and shortly we'll, we'll open it up to allow the people that are in favor of this to speak. So you'll hear their, their side also. Thank you. My next question is, with all this, like, all these people saying against it, what is that for the future of Wisconsin Rapids and the small businesses that are going to be taxed possibly even more than, than they supposedly deserve, how would someone like, I don't know, like someone who wants to get a first job at a small business, what well, there is none left? I don't know what to tell them when I'm like 60 years old. That's all I have. Thank, Thank you, Josh. Is there anybody else that, go ahead, sir, in the back, and then I see you, oh, I see you back there too. So I'll get you next. Thank you. Good evening, John Van Loop, 20 Elm Street. Um, I agree with a lot that was said tonight. Todd, you took the words out of my mouth. Well said, succinct. Um, I'm just not understanding the rush into this. Um, if I'm living on Oak Street, yeah, pass it, because I know it's coming up in 2023. Um, hopefully, they're looking at these coffers are built up um, that we're all going to pay for the Oak Street from Jackson Street up to 16th. Big project. But I guess the bigger thing is, when I say why the rush, I read through the um, uh, the PowerPoint presentation that the consultants put together that you have online, and they caution about the pending lawsuits and the legality of it, and if it's if it's constitutional in the state of Wisconsin uh, or in the nation to do so. Um, not sure why we're rushing into it. I guess I would just say let's pump the brakes, make sure it's legal, and if it is legal. Uh, the fees we set up are, are fair, fair across the board, if that can be set up. Um, I'd like to know more about the wheel tax, too, because that sounded interesting. So that's all I have to say. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Ma'am? Thank you. Hi. I'm Connie Zwicky. I live on 2160 Elm Street. And I'm just saying, through this pandemic, plandemic, whatever you want to call it, it's put everybody in such a burden. I have a daughter that is in business for herself, that they were shut down for a couple months. I have a son that started a new business. Uh, all these business owners, these small business owners, are just barely getting back to running they aren't at full speed yet. We need these businesses. We need them in Wisconsin Rapids. Um, I agree, there's gotta be some other way. And I'm just asking you to take your time and really listen to all the pros and cons and think about the people. Like this is, I think it's becoming our retirement community and a lot of people are on fixed incomes, you don't get any raises. I'm, I'm one of those people. I worked all my life too. And when you get to an age where you think that you're gonna be able to um, pull from your resources, all these taxes, once you put them on, they never go away. You have, look at the water, you have the water power cost adjustment, the water bill, you have the sewer, service charge, this, uh, so how much you use for sewer. Uh, it's, it never goes away. It was supposed to be temporary. And all I'm saying, 
if this actually puts some of these businesses uh, down where they can't function anymore, then where's the money gonna come from? We all need these people and we, we all need it. People need jobs. Please think about it. Thank you. Anybody else wish to speak against the utility? And I guess for a final time or the third time, does anybody wish to speak against the utility? Okay, let's open it up now to anybody that wishes to speak in favor of the utility. Anybody? Go ahead. It's on? Okay, Holly Pastore, 711 18th Avenue South. I know some of you have heard from me, all of you have heard from me, let's get over that. Um, I'll say tonight that hearing everyone's stories is taking my breath away and making me a little ill, but I do have to speak on behalf, as you know, of the homeowners. I am on 18th Avenue, I'm part of an alliance of 72 homes, where we are now subject to the 18th Avenue project, where our street is being dug up, and people back in March 2019 were, no, 2019, 2020, were delivered the special assessment bills, the estimate of which, so far, I've heard none less than $10,000, minus 10 to $12,000. Like the businesses, we were all impacted by 2020. It was an awful year. Um, we have had job loss, physical suffering, hours cut, um, and we, cannot afford this, you know, in our way either. It's hard on the small businesses, it's hard on the churches with schools, but we have to protect the individuals. You talk about, um, or people have talked about uh, people on fixed incomes. There are widows on my street who also are on fixed incomes and they can't cough up this $10,000. There is one who, uh, one person who is on the corner of Chase Street, which had the work that was explained, done, and is on the corner of Chase and 18th, and so that person's bill is twenty to $22,000 due to special assessments. That's more punishing than nine bucks a month, let me tell you. So I encourage you to continue your pursuit of a fair and equitable solution. Um, it's, it's really been honorable. Yes, it is harder anymore to communicate for us to get the information. The newspaper, social media is ridiculous like some of us saw today. Thank you for clearing some things up. Um, though we did not pursue that ourselves. But I, I was going to reread the email that I had sent to you, but I think that's all I have to say. Continue the pursuit. It's almost there. It's so, so much better for individuals. We can't, we can't cough up $10,000. We barely could then on our street. We most certainly cannot now. But these small businesses and the the churches with, with the schools, hear their, hear their concerns, make some adjustments, fine tune this or find another way. But don't forget the people of 18th Avenue and all this. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak in favor? Go ahead. Bud, make sure the microphone's on. Honorable Mayor and members of the council, I'd like to say a few words now regarding this transportation utility. Uh, speaking as an individual, as a property owner, but not as a resident or a business. If uh, I were uh, a restaurant or a business, I might look at this a lot different. Um, I think the city uh, is uh, in need of money. There's a lot of streets in this town that need repair. As an example, uh, Second uh, Street from Median or Mead uh, Street down to the Old Elks. Uh, I checked that a number of times. There's 14 places along there where the curb should be replaced. Uh, well, there's water standing in the curb. There's holes in the street. There was brand new sidewalk put down 2nd Street, but nothing done to the street. 
uh, the same way uh, or the same situation exists behind the post office. That's a concrete street, should have been repaired or replaced many years ago, but it hasn't. Um, I can accept uh, as an individual, as a property owner, this fee uh, added to our electric bill. I can accept that a lot easier than I can $11,300 in a special assessment. Plus, if I put that on 15 years, I got to pay 3.5%, so that adds to the cost. Um, I'd like to know who approves some of these projects, if the councilmen actually take a look at them. And a good example is in front of my house. I live on Chase Street. I got two pieces of pipe here. This is the water line that they replaced to my home this year. This is the water pipe that was put in in 1962 and I was billed for it in 1963. These two pieces of pipe are identical in length. I had them weighed. They weigh basically the same. The pipe that was put in in 1962 has never failed. There hasn't been any failure on Chase Street that I know of. So it, it's still serves my home with water. Why do I have to pay another thousand dollars or better to replace pipe that isn't necessary? One other thing that I think that the council needs to look at is a plan for sidewalk. On Chase Street, there's sidewalk on both sides of the street from the expressway to 17th. When Chase Street was rebuilt, sidewalk was installed on both sides of Chase Street from 17th to 21st. Many years ago when they rebuilt 21st Avenue, um, the resolution, preliminary resolution, called for sidewalk to be installed on 21st. They had a public hearing at that time, and the people turned it down. And the council turned it down. They voted not to put it in. On Chase Street now, the sidewalk is like a road to nowhere. It ends on 21st Avenue. There's no sidewalk going to the north on 21st. There's one block to the south on 21st. There's no sidewalk west on Chase Street. I moved into my home in... Uh, 1962, late in the year. The development on the west side of the river, on uh, west of 21st, has been spotty, it, to say the least. I can, call, I can count new homes on my hand. Um, years ago, we had a planner come in and tell us where development would take place in the city. And that plan should be in City Hall someplace. They said that development on the west side of the city would not be uh, rampant. Uh, it would be spotty. It was because high groundwater table. It was because of rock formations. It was because of uh, uh, soil conditions. And it was because of wetlands. They said that development in the city would take place to the south and east of Wisconsin Rapids. And that's where Wisconsin Rapids should put its money to uh, increase uh, development. And that's just exactly what's happened over the years. So um, I think that uh, on the sidewalk, the council has to take a look and do a study, what's the usage going to be? Is sidewalk requested on both sides of the street, one side of the street, or not at all? And when, uh, I think the city will save a lot of money in the wrong one.
Thank you. Bud, can you state your name and your address? Pardon? Can you state your name and your address for the oh, record? Vernon Virginsky, 2031 Chase Street. Thank you, Bud. I think um, uh, on this special assessment, too, people should be given a choice. Do they want to pay it all at one time, or do they want to put a fee on their electric bill? Is there anybody else that wishes to speak in favor? All right, and I guess I will call for the last time. Does anybody wish to speak in favor of the utility? Okay. Does council have anything they wish to add or ask? Go ahead, Tom. Yeah, uh, I don't think, Joe, you mentioned in your opening remarks, but I think it's uh, something that's important for all of us, and I think uh, important, uh, I think there's a miscommunication, really, I think, of how this is actually going to be built out, but I think it's important, and I don't know if you have it with you, but I think... Uh, off the top of your head anyway, could you speak to the speak to the fact of what condition the streets in Wisconsin Rapids are in? And I know we have a graph, I don't know, maybe I should even look, I don't think I have it with me. Speak to the miles of street that we have within the city. Uh, and within that graph, I think that you had, it had uh, the age of not of uh, the different uh, you know streets. It had to, you know those that were 40 years old, 60 years old, 80 years old, 100 plus years old, and that type of thing. And that's I think basically how we ended up with um, looking at this uh, transportation study. Started out. Uh, or I shouldn't say it started out. Um, the assessments have been a thorn, I think, in everybody's side for decades. And especially when I say that, it's a thorn in people's sides who have it, the assessment, who have projects going by their house. The reason that some areas got sidewalks, some didn't, I guess maybe it's the push and pull or whatever. At the point in time, it was a different way that things were done than there is now. But it's, sometimes it was those who, I'll say, screamed or cried the loudest, and if they didn't want it, it didn't happen. There's a way to get a special grant, and some that they were in favor of it. But this is a way, and I think if Joe has that, that uh, I hope you listen because to see, I think, to, I, I know, I hope anyway, the condition that our streets are in are horrible. So this isn't something that we're just looking that we want money to make money that we are looking for jobs. There is a five-year plan, which I think Public Works had on their committee, I think, at their last meeting. That does, it's not set in stone. It's like anything. Another project can come up and get pushed ahead or pushed back or whatever. But something has to be done in Wisconsin Rapids in regards to how the streets are reconstructed. There has to be a time frame. We're not keeping up at all with how streets deteriorate. 
And when you get into that streets are whole, and, and not just the streets. I mean, if we're just talking about the blacktop, that'd be one thing. It's the infrastructure, the underground. And that's where you get into the people that talk about ten, twelve, twenty thousand dollars assessments. And that's why I said over decades that this has been going on. But the reason there wasn't any relief is it only affected a certain number of people every year. Finally, it's come about that there's got to be a better way. So it began uh, quite some time ago looking at what became this transportation utility plan uh, to see what could be done. And what would be hopefully something that could make it more fair and equitable to the property owners, residential, businesses, the like. It's not looked at to put anybody out of business, and we all know what we've gone through in the last year and a half and more, and still in it. But this is, so it was to continue and to get away from borrowing money, hopefully, to do the projects. So I don't know, Joe, did you find that to, in your? I do have some of the basic information that we've shared in the past. Um, so, so the city um, currently maintains 150 miles of roadway in, in the city's corporate limits. Uh, of that, on any given year, we replace uh, approximately one mile of, of street. And so, you know, just given the math, um, um, well, I should, I should mention that our, our typical design life, uh, you know, we can, we can get a, a local street to with the proper maintenance to last uh, between 40 and 60 years. So uh, just using, you know, 50 years as the average, um, we should be at a, a, a th three, mile, um, three mile per year replacement level. And so, Tom, the information that you are mentioning in the graph, uh, which is a lot of information is out on the city's website on this, um, including that graph. But 64% um, of the city streets are, are older than, than 40 years old. And so that, that's, I guess, the summary of our current replacement level and current condition of our streets. Thank you, Joel. And if I may... Mr. Mayor, that's uh, somewhat in a nutshell, I think, how we got here, and it was to look at how we could um, alleviate uh, the special assessments that were levied upon property owners where projects were being done along this mile or whatever stretch that we were doing each year, plus the borrowing of money that we were doing in that. So if we could find a better way to do it. So I, I, I think, and I think, Everybody else here has listened to the comments that were made. I made some notes myself. Uh, but I think to listen to, and I hope, hopefully, that we can have more of a definitive price st structure uh, before something's agreed upon, so you know what you're for sure looking at, because I think that's very important. But for sure, we're not looking at to put any business out, out of business. But it's to help out, to alleviate the special assessments, those affected that way. But it's a, a way that we can get in a more sustainable level, level of taking care of our streets. Uh, so, we're get, uh, you know, I'm somewhat standing on a soapbox. I'm not on the Public Works Committee anymore. I had been. But it's a, uh, it's something that uh, unfortunately um, this or some other way should have been thought of 
a long time ago. Um, but we had the assessments, and for whatever reason, that stayed. That was the gospel and the way to do it in town. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, I could have said I'm in favor of it. I didn't do that. Um, we have to find a better way to structure and pay for our projects <coughs> and to get the stuff done. Uh, we have torn up streets with the infrastructure that is 100 years old and plus over, older. It's not all made of concrete. It's all not made of steel. Logs are hollowed out. So we have to take care of it. And like I said earlier, I guess, uh, you know, if it was just to pave over the top to make things look good, that'd be one thing. But we want to get on a, the, the plan is to If there, is a, if there is where we can pave over, and the underground is good for another 20, 30 years, fine. But also with that, if we gotta tear up the street, it's to do all of it. It's to dig it up, to do the sewer, water, and all of that with it at the same time, a total reconstruct. And it's gonna be good for that, hopefully 40, 60, or whatever number of years. Hopefully more. But, uh, and as Joe said, this is not on how many cars are going by your business. There is a formula. They have it. I don't in front of them. And that, but I do hope, uh, as I said here, that, uh, and I'll, I'll be quiet, but uh, I, think, I think something had to be said here. Uh, Hopefully that uh, if it's next month, if we're ready, uh, hope it was the hope was to be that we would be, but hopefully that uh, there'll be more of a definitive uh, fee structure that would be there for everybody to see. We're close, so hopefully we can get there within the within that time frame. Um, if not, hopefully we within even ourselves we can have discussions of where we go from here, or what we do in the meantime, or, you know, so. Uh, with that, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, I'll turn it back over to you. Thank you. Thank you. Dean? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, yeah, I'm deeply concerned about um, re residents with living in homes of values of 60, to eighty thousand dollars and having assessments of twelve thousand dollars on them, fixed incomes, retired people, and I'm um, obviously the way this affects business is a very concern to me too as well. So I guess the only question I have is if we have ten to fifteen percent left to analyze, it doesn't seem I I have a problem not being able to have that answer within. The next few weeks, I, I guess I'm just looking as what the justification is and not be able to have that quickly, and so that we have this info well ahead of October, the yeah, October meeting. So I guess I'm just looking what type of time frame staff and and Joe and think that it's going to take to do this analysis of the last 15 percent of these properties. That's all I have. Thank you, Jake. Thank you. I don't think we should have had this public hearing without a final fee structure. I think it's clear the public does not have an understanding fully of the transportation utility at this time, and we need to do more education, whether that's bring the consultants back so that some of these questions can be asked from the public to them, uh, or hold a referendum, which I suggested before, and let the public be educated on this more before we bring this forward. Those are my thoughts on it at this time. I really just think we should have had more, especially with unanswered questions 
tonight. Thank you. Patrick? I have one question on this. Uh, okay, so we have this ordinance, Chapter 51, that we had approved in committee. And since the committee, I've kind of been going over this uh, 5111, which is the appeal process, which if somebody wants to appeal, they have to pay a $150 fee in order to make an appeal. Um, out of 7,000 properties in the city, I think that there, there are going to be mistakes. I'm not naive to think that we're going to be 100%. And I think that having a $150 uh, fee for somebody who is right and they were put in the wrong category, um, I think that needs to be addressed. Um, Maybe years down the road we could, after we get it established. But in the beginning, I think it might be a little bumpy. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to say thank you for everybody who came out tonight to share their um, concerns and their support. Uh, pretty new to the city council and uh, been thrown into the public works committee and understanding uh, as much as I can, as quick as I can, about the transportation utility that's kind of before us right now. The one thing we're really not talking about is, uh, and uh, Mr. Aom touched on a little bit, but I think it's very important to understand, we're not only talking about that $500,000 in special assessments that are, it's only going higher and higher for people, because it, it wasn't this much a few years ago. I mean, costs on this stuff are getting way out of control, and that's what's hurting people to such a big degree. But the other side to it is for the last, I'm not sure exactly how many years we've been doing it, but we've been taking out roughly uh, a, a loan for a million and a half dollars. And that, uh, so basically between the special assessments and the $2 million, this is how my mind kind of wraps around this, we're looking at a $2 million shortfall when it comes to the amount of money we make every year that we have to spend on the roads. So the roads kind of get put to the side, we take out that loan, and that loan is a revolving loan. So we, for the last 20 years, I think roughly, uh, my numbers aren't going to be perfect here, we, we take on another million and a half dollars. So after 20 years, a million and a half drops off and we pick up another million and a half. It just keeps rotating through and we're paying all this interest on that money. To me, that's scary. I'm a small business owner also, uh, so I understand the struggles that have been presented here. Uh, but at the same time, we have issues, which is the roads. Um, but the bigger issue to me is that the city is at its 65% uh, debt comfortability, I guess would be the word for it. Like, we're far enough in the hole that we're kind of in trouble. And I get, again, this is just my opinion and how I see it. We need to fix that, and this is a way for us to be able to fix that. It's not the best way because we still, if we're really talking about it, we're still short $2 million every year. So our, our goal is to make that $2 million in front of needing the $2 million so we can do the roads and set up a, a sustainable plan to be able to get these mm -hmm. roads done and, and do a good job doing that because we have enough money to, to take care of that business but we're still talking about the same thing. You know, we're adding, we're trying to find the $2 million, and, and I'm not taking anything away from what the city's done for, for the last 20, 30 years in terms of taking out that million and a half dollar loan in order to do the roads. I don't know if the question was ever there or if the state started giving us less money or what it took to get us in that position where we didn't have enough money to cover the entire plan for the year. So this is the route we took special assessments and taking out debt. Um, but then we added on a whole bunch of more debt with uh, the awesome water park we have and the lake, the riverfront stuff that's been done. And then we have all these other projects that are going on. It's, it's getting to the point where we're not, we're not in the best situation, and again, as far as I'm concerned. So this is our way of handling the you know, immediate 
problem, which is how do we start getting this money paid up front so we can start getting away from the debt, paying off the debt. As we're paying it off, the levy will decrease because we're paying less interest on that money and we can get that down to zero and get us <clears throat> more in a position where we're playing ahead of the game and seeing our plans and our capital expenses and making uh, better decisions based on that than what we're actually doing right now. So thank you for your time. Ryan. Thank you. Uh, one point I'd like to make, obviously, uh, one of the biggest issues with this is is the fees that will be placed on small businesses within, within, within the city. Um, the trip charges are, you know, obviously a business with a large trip charge is going to have a lot of customers coming into that business that associates that fee. So one thing that really hasn't been discussed, say, like a McDonald's or, or a coffee shop, I mean, those places can pass those fees, those costs down to their customers. Now, obviously, that means residents here in town are going to pay a few more pennies for a burger uh, or an extra quarter for a cup of coffee. But it also brings into play the scenario where non-residents coming in, into town, patronizing our businesses, will help fund our city street repairs by those costs being passed down. So I just wanted to throw that scenario out there, too, for food for thought. Thank you. Any other council have anything? I guess uh, from my position, I'll say that, uh, not to ask the city attorney, but I agree that um, I do not favor, nor will I favor putting on the next council agenda until we have those costs. You know, we need that table completed so residents and business owners know what those fees are gonna be. And I, I will not support putting this on the council agenda until we have that. I, I cannot wrap my brain around that we're gonna approve an ordinance before we know what we're all gonna pay, whether it be a business or a homeowner for sure. So I guess I'm, I'm tasking the people to get that table done and we need to get that out to make sure everybody's aware of those costs. And then also for further information, you know, if you haven't seen a lot of information on this, our website is loaded with it. Uh, we try to put everything out there. So if you have questions, you know, that's a good place to start. Thank you. And so with nothing else, and there's no action needed on this item, and we can go on to item nine. Consider for adoption the action of the plan commission at its meeting held September 13. I guess if everybody wants to sit and listen to me read this report, I'll, <laughs> otherwise I'll give you a second to get up and get out of here while you can. <laughs> Thanks, Todd. I guess anybody need need to take a moment to uh, to make a run. It'll take me a while. It's a long. It'll be a longer read. So you've got a few minutes if you need to excuse yourself. I unfortunately cannot. Yes, <laughs> I cannot. All right, so the rest of you, uh, enjoy yourself. Um, the Planning Commission met at 5.30 p.m. on September 13th at City Hall. A uh, list of item, or sorry, a list of uh, attendees are on, count, are on file at the clerk's office. The meeting was called to order at 5.31 p.m. Uh, item one, approval of the reports from the August 2nd, 2021 Planning Commission meeting. Motion by fees to approve the Planning Commission report on, uh, from August 2nd, seconded by Goudreau, motion carried six days, zero nays. Item two is um, plan 21-0848, Verso Corporation, request to alter boundary lines of non-conforming lots to lessen the non-conformity at 231 First Street North, parcel ID 3402440, 300 Jackson Street, parcel ID 3402526, 610 4th Avenue North, parcel ID 3402445, and at 954th Avenue North, parcel ID 3402435. Staff noted uh, following address corrections at 300 West Jackson Street and 231 First Avenue North. Commissioner Feith had, re had questions regarding the chain of title to which staff and Don uh, Chaput responded 
motion by Davin to approve the request to alter boundary lines of non-conforming lots to lessen the non-conformity at 231 First Avenue North, parcel ID 3402440, 300 West Jackson Street, parcel ID 3425266, 610 Fourth Avenue North, parcel ID 3402445, and at 950 Fourth Avenue North, parcel ID 3402435. That was seconded by Austin. Um, subject to the following conditions, uh, where land is available and setbacks can be obtained without interfering with adjusted buildings or inter, inter, infrastructure, applicable setback requirements shall be met from or for existing buildings. Uh, the existing buildings described in detail A of the proposed CSM shall provided shall be provided an access agreement or easement. Motion carried 6A, zero nays. And item three, plan 21-0851, Bursal Corporation. Request for a certified survey map approval to create three lots at 954th Avenue North, parcel ID 3402435. Motion by Blazer to approve the request for certified survey maps. Map approval to create three lots at 950 North 4th Avenue North, parcel ID 3402435, seconded by Tau, uh, subject to the following conditions. Where land is available and sex backs can be obtained without interfering with adjacent buildings or infrastructure, applicable setback requirements shall be met for existing buildings. That motion carried six A's, zero nays. Plan or sorry, item four, plan 21-0907, Mark Johnson, forward real estate, estate services, LLC, request for a certified survey map, approval to create two lots at 2820 A Street South, parcel ID 3412972. Participating remotely was Kathleen Schutz, who expressed her concerns about ingress, egress, and standards for traffic and Children walk into school to which Commissioner Feith and Mr. Kearns responded. Motion by off the excuse me, motion by Austin to accept the request for the for a certified survey map approval to create two lots at 2820 A Street South, parcel ID 3412972, seconded by Goudreau, subject to the following conditions. One city staff shall have the authority to review and approve minor modifications. That motion carries six A zero nays. Item five is plan 21-08, two, correction 0852, Mark Johnson forward real estate or real estate services to LLC, request for a site plan review to construct a caribou coffee at 2820 A Street South, parcel ID 3412972. Commissioner Davin had questions about signage and Kyle Kern responded. Motion by Goudreau to approve the request for site plan review to construct the Caribou Coffee at 2820 A Street South, parcel ID 3412972. Second by Tao, subject to the following conditions. A detailed landscaping plan shall be provided meeting all applicable landscape requirements for the development to be reviewed and approved by the Community Development Department. Item two, or number two is the refuse. Enclosure shall match the design and color of the primary building. Three is cut off lighting fixtures or equivalent shall be used for the development and lighting from the development shall not exceed 0 0.2 can, uh, foot candles at neighboring commercial property lines. Four is applicable permits through the city shall be obtained. Community Development Department shall have the authority to approve minor modifications to the plans. Motion carried 6A, zero nays. Item six is plan 21-0813, Wisconsin Rapids. 3810 A Street South, Wisconsin, LLC. Request for a site plan review to make site improvements, including to the parking lot for the restaurant at 3810 A Street South, parcel ID 3413805. Motion by Feith to approve the request for site plan review to make site plan site improvements, including to the parking lot for a restaurant at 3810 A Street South, parcel ID 34. 13805, second by Davin, subject to the following conditions. Item one is a maximum of 50% of on site parking shall be permitted to exist within the front of the building. The applicant shall submit an up 
an updated site plan for review and approval to the community development department. Item three is light from the business shall not exceed 0.2 foot candles at the neighboring commercial property line and 0.1 foot candles at the neighboring residential property line. Applicable, boy, we're gonna have to change that word, Kyle. I can't say that. Permits through the city shall be obtained. Item five, community development staff shall have the authority to approve minor modifications to the plans. That motion carried six A's, zero nays. And item seven is plan 21 0880 Dale Davis Sweeps Food Pantry request for a site plan review to construct an addition on to a building housing the food pantry at 2321 West Grand Avenue, parcel ID 3401190. Motion by Austin to approve the request for the site plan review to construct an addition onto the building housing the food pantry at 2321 West Grand Avenue, parcel ID 3401190. Subject to the recommendation to outline in the staff report, seconded by Blazer, subject to the following conditions. Item one is driveways for the garage addition shall be hard surfaced. Two is the landscaping plan shall be submitted for review and approval by the community development department. The addition shall match the color of the building, of the primary building, <clears throat> so as to blend, better blend into the facade. Cutoff lighting fixtures shall be used for all building elevations. Light from the business shall not exceed 0.2 foot candles at the neighboring commercial property line. Applicable permit shall or through the city shall be obtained. Community de development staff shall have authority to approve minor modifications to the plan. That motion carried six A, zero nays. Item eight is plan 21-0882. Mitch Altman, representing Metolco, request for a site plan review to construct a building at 4800 Commerce Drive, parcel ID 3409861. The neighbor to the south of Metolco, Allen, had spoken to with Mr. Kearns on the phone about his concerns regarding odors, storm runoff, water runoff, and expressed that he in, ge he in general was not in favor of a Metolco doing any more construction on the property. Kyle Kearns stated that any building permits would need to be reviewed and approved by the city engineering department. Commissioner Goudreau felt the new building would enhance safety in the faci facilities process. Motion by Goudreau to approve the request for site plan review to construct a building at 4800 Commercial Drive, parcel ID 3409861. Second by Austin, subject to the following conditions. Item one, cutoff lighting fixtures shall be installed on all facades. Two, lighting from the business shall not exceed two, or two tenths foot candles at neighboring commercial property lines or one tenth foot candles at neighboring residential property lines. Item three is exterior materials of the building shall match the design and color of principal buildings. Applicable permits through the city shall be obtained along with other, with from, along with other jurisdictions such as the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. Number five is community development staff shall have authority to approve minor modifications and plans. That motion carries six A's, zero nays. Item nine is plan-210838, Wisconsin Rapids School District. Public hearing and action on a request for a conditional use permit amendment to construct an addition on high school, on the high school at 1801 16th Street South, parcel ID 3414785. Public hearing opened at 614 p.m. Speaking in favor was Ed Allison and Ron Rasmussen. Speaking against were none. Public hearing closed at 618 p.m. Commissioners were asked about ba ba bollards, glass, other safety devices in which Ed Allison responded. Commissioner Dobbin wanted to know more about the requirements for sidewalks, which uh, Kyle Kern also responded. Hey, we're on the last page. Motion by Goudreau to approve the, the request for a condition use permit amendment to construct an addition on the high school at 1801 16th Street South, parcel ID 3414751. Second by Dobbin, subject to the following conditions. One, an updated landscape plan shall be submitted, meeting applicable requirements to be reviewed and approved by the Community Development Department. Number two is a lighting plan shall be submitted, meeting applicable standards to be reviewed and approved by the Community Development Department. Number three is applicable 
building and stormwater permits state and local shall be obtained. Number four is minor modifications of the plan shall be submitted to be reviewed and approved by the Community Development Department. That motion carried 6A, 0 nays. And item 10 is motion, or sorry, plan 21-0816, County of Wood, public hearing and action on a request for a zoning map amendment to rezone 410 Avon Street, parcel ID 3407750, zone B2, general commercial and R2 mixed residential district. At 431 Saratoga Street, parcel ID 3407748, Zone B2, com General Commercial, to I1 Institutional District. Lee Tao abstained from, this, from the item. The public hearing opened at 6.31 p.m. Speaking in favor were none. Speaking against were none. That public hearing was closed at 6.32 p.m. Motion by Blazer, second by Fee, to approve the request for the zoning of map amendment to rezone 410 Avon Street, parcel ID 3407750, Zone B2, General Commercial and R2 Mixed Residential District, and at 431 Saratoga Street, parcel ID 347748, Zone B2 General Commercial and I1 Institutional District. Postponement of the action was recommended by city staff to ensure adherence, adherence to the recommend, rec requirements for consistency with the city's comprehensive plan. Blazer and Feith withdrew their motion and no action was taken. Further discussion on this agenda will occur at a future commission meeting. And on to item 11, adjournment. Motion by Goudreau to adjourn, second by Austin. Motion carried six A's, zero nays, and that meeting adjourned at 6.34 p.m. With that, I submit it for your review and approval. I'll make Mr. a motion to approve the planning commission minutes. Okay, we have a motion by Austin. And the second by Zachary. Mr. Elm? Just a question. Is Kyle still here tonight? Yes, sir. Oh, I thought he might. He's, he's I high. thought he was, but I couldn't see around the corner. Mm -hmm. Just a question, Kyle, on uh, number eight, and what I'm going to ask, it may not uh, necessarily pertain to what the issue is, but a comment that was made there was uh, it has to do with uh, Metallico. Uh, the building that uh, they are interested in building. There was a resident in, uh, out there who complained, I guess, uh, about the odor, stormwater runoff. Uh, the building that's in question uh, of them building, it doesn't have anything to do with this, does that? Or it does it? I'm not sure what the building has that there has to do with. So it, the the primary concern of the neighbor um, that's referenced in the minutes uh, is to the south. And their concern with, was with regards to the stormwater runoff and how that's being handled generally on the property. Um, I think the, the proposed building, the accessory building that they're proposing, would have to meet the city's applicable yeah. stormwater requirements. So they would have to go through engineering to get a stormwater permit. Uh, they may have to amend their stormwater plan that was initially created for the for the development, but ultimately there is a review to make sure that stormwater is being handled properly on site. Okay, I just, um, uh, so what is the building, the addition being for? Being, what, what is what, it? What's it constructed for? Um, so they, uh, right now they have, uh, to the east of their facility, they have an open air storage area for their scrap metal. So they bring in a lot of scrap aluminum that then they mix with pure aluminum to do their casting. And that right now that's exposed to the open air. And if you inject water into the casting process at all, um, it can have very bad side effects. And so they wanna have a, a storage shed essentially that's covered to prevent snow, rain from getting on the scrap metal. Uh, so they'll still use the open area that they have that's uncovered. Uh, but the new area allows them to process that scrap aluminum quicker without having to dry it or wait for it to dry uh, by, by creating the new facility or the new accessory structure. Okay, thank you. And, and uh, like I said, uh, I uh, didn't have a problem, I guess, with the request of what they wanted. I was just interested in what the request or the comment that the resident to the south had made about the runoff. And I guess if there, are, that, if there is anything, I hope that would be would be addressed, uh, you know. Uh. Yeah, it, it, it should be addressed with the, the stormwater review. I think also it's important to note that I think the event that was cited to the south 
uh, was in regards to the rains we received in early August, um, which I think one of the events was like a five inch rain event that's very uncommon um, and may have led to some sheeting and, uh, and, and some stormwater issues beyond just what was found on the Metalco site. There's a ditch there as well. Um, you've got some high groundwater and some cranberry fields to the east. So I think there are multiple factors that played into um, uh, that individual's concern. Nonetheless, again, there will be a stormwater review that occurs as part of the process. Thank you. Thank you, Kyle. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, please cast your ballots. That motion carried eight A's, zero nays. It's a time can take a break from listening to me speak. Uh, item 10 is consider for adoption the action of standing committees from the Common Council as follows. Um, first one is Finance and Property Committee held September 7th. Mr. Rayom. Thank you, Your Honor. The Finance and Property Committee met at 4.30 p.m. on Tuesday, September 7th, 2021 in the Council Chambers at City Hall. The meeting was live to, uh, on Wisconsin Rapids Community Media Spectrum Channel 985 and Solaris Channel 3. All members of the Finance Committee were present. Also in attendance were all the person Veneman, Mayor Blazer, Kyle Kearns, Tyler Mickelson, Sue Schill, Jennifer Gossick, and Tim DeSorcy. A list of others in attendance is on file in the clerk's office. Item one was called a meeting order. Chairman Pers Chairperson Rayom called the meeting order at 4.35 p.m. Item two, consider for approval a temporary retail class B fermented malt beverages license for Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce, 1120 Lincoln Street, for the premises as outlined on the map provided for a 21st annual downtown grand affair, grand affair to be held on Sunday, September 12th, 2021, from 10 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. As moved by Katnaw, second by Bempe, to approve the temporary retail class B fermented malt beverage license for Heart of Wisconsin Chamber of Commerce, 1120 Lincoln Street, for the premises as outlined on the map provided for a 21st annual downtown grand affair to be held on Sunday, September 12th, 2021, from 10 to 3 p.m., Motion carried. Item three, consider for approval a temporary retail class B fermented malt beverages license for Central Wisconsin C Cultural Center, 2651 8th Street South for a gallery op opening to be held on Thursday, September 23rd, 2021 from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. It was moved by Bempke, seconded by Katnaw to approve the temporary retail class B fermented malt beverages license for Central Wisconsin Cultural Center, 2651 8th Street South, for a gallery opening to be held on Thursday, September 23rd, 2021, from 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m., and that motion carried. Item four, consider for approval a temporary retail Class B fermented malt beverages and Class B wine license for Central Wisconsin Cultural Center, 2651 8th Street South, for an Art on Tap event to be held on Saturday, October 2nd, 2021, from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. It's moved by Katnaw, seconded by Bamke, to approve the temporary retail Class B fermented malt beverages and Class B wine license for Central Wisconsin Cultural Center, 2651 8th Street South, for an Art on Tap event to be held on Saturday, October 2nd, 2021, from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m., and that motion carried. Item five, consider for approval a temporary retail Class B fermented malt beverages and Class B wine license for Assumption Catholic Schools Incorporated, 445 Chestnut Street for a royal event to be held on Sunday, October 3rd, 2021 from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. As moved by Bam Key, seconded by Katnaw to approve the temporary retail cl Class B fermented malt beverages and Class B wine license for Assumption Catholic Schools Incorporated 445 Chestnut Street for a royal event to be held on Sunday, October 3rd, 2021, from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m., and that motion carried. Item six, consider a quote from for a Fortnite Enterprise firewall with five years of replacement and support was set up and configuration performed by RMM Solutions. It is moved by Katnaw, seconded by Bemke, to approve the purchase of a Fortnite Enterprise firewall with five years of replacement and support, with setup and configuration performed 
by RMM Solutions. It's attachment one and the motion carried. Item seven, consider for approval of a revised contract with forward appraisal LLC for assessment services for assessment years 2022 and 2023 to include additional services that were previously provided by the administrative technician. It is moved by Realm Secondary of MP to approve the revised contract with forward appraisal LLC for assessment services for years 2022, 2023 to include additional services that were previously provided by the administrative technician. That's attachment two, uh, motion carried. Item eight, uh, 22, 2022 budget timeline. The committee discussed the timing of the budget meetings and the finance director will create a tentative schedule for those meetings. It was moved by Catnaw, seconded by Bempke to set the public hearing on the 2022 budget for Thursday, November 11th at 6 p.m. and that motion carried. Item nine, audit of the bills. It was moved by Catnaw, by Bem seconded by Bempke to approve check number 9626 to 9971 and that motion carried. Item 10, consider the land use of vacant city owned building located at 161 and 163 Third Street Parcel IDs 34-08156 and 3408157. In open session, the committee may vote to go into closed session under section 19.85, parent one, parent E of the Wisconsin statutes, which reads deliberate, deliberating or negotiating the purchasing of public properties, the investing of public funds, or conducting other specifi specified public business whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require closed session. In closed session, the committee may discuss negotiations and strategy regarding the sale of the above property. The committee may adjourn in closed session or may return to open session. In open session, the committee may continue to discuss the land use of a vacant city-owned building. It is moved by Vemke, seconded by Katna to go into closed session. Roll call vote resulted in the affirmative. In closed session, Community Director Kyle Kearns gave a presentation on the land use of the city-owned building. It's moved by Bempke, seconded by Katna to return to open session. Roll call vote resulted in the affirmative. In open session, it was moved by Katna, seconded by Bempke, to direct city staff to list the property for sale at the fire market price of $87,700 with a local real estate agent for a minimum of three months, and that motion carried. Item th 11 uh, was adjourned. It was moved by Bempke, seconded by Cat, not to adjourn. The motion carried, and the meeting adjourned at 6:19 p.m. And with that, Your Honor, I'd move for adoption of the report. Thank you. We have a motion by Rome, seconded by Bempke. Is there any items need to be held out, or Ms. Evanson? I just had a question with number eight, with the 2022 budget timeline. Okay, so for you were talking Thursday, November 11th at 6 o'clock would be the public hearing to approve the 2022 budget for the city. It, it's, the, no. it's the public comment period, hearing, so the open. Hearing. But then a regular meeting will be on that Tuesday for the actual adoption of the okay. budget. Okay. Because what they found in the past was it, if they, have, they hold a public hearing the same night as the adoption, that if they want to make changes, it's too hard to do it on the fly at that point. Okay. Um, I just, as far as the budgets are going, um, are there any preliminary data, like significant changes in any of the departments? Or, I mean, do we know that yet? Or has anyone seen anything? No. Nope. So right now, um, myself and the finance director have been work meeting with the department heads, and they've been presenting their basically their raw budget, mm -hmm. and then Tim will compile it, and I believe hopefully by the 1st of October you'll get that preliminary budget, and then then finance will start holding budget meetings where they'll actually have the department heads come in and present that budget at that time, or throughout uh, throughout Octo um, throughout the month. And so when it comes as a finished prod product, council won't receive that until? It'll be sometime before the public hearing, but it will be a work in progress by the finance committee. Okay. You know, if they make motions or make adjustments. Okay. We try to get a semi-close balance budget so then it's not as much of a daunting task for the council to try to balance it. 
Yeah, but Tom's got a lot of experience. Well, I, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily in finance, but I think what we have is a proposed budget. Correct. With all the departments and everything um, that we'll have, and uh, each each night we'll have a different department or departments, depending who you know how many or how big the department is that we have come in, mm -hmm. and they'll come in and present their case of why they want the money and questions can then be asked uh, or not <laughs> whatever and uh, uh, with that through the point in time you know notes are taken and uh, all the persons can be making notes or whatever that uh, maybe they think this is too much here or not enough there or something so that to come get to the public hearing where that starts out as I was saying that's the proposed budget so that it'll be a budget but it's proposed so by the time the public hearing we should have a budget but then again with the proposed that budget is the hearing was the public to be invited in and that you know it could change and that's why we ended up having a meeting before the council meeting instead of on the night of that. But uh, so there will, I mean, there will be numbers and everything there that uh, hopefully within the first part of October we should be getting. Correct. And I guess why I'm asking, and Sue can shut me up if it's not appropriate or not, um, but I have heard through the grapevine that um, we are going to be trying to eliminate the public works director position. And I guess I don't want to be caught off guard when I don't have any time to, you know, if they say it's eliminated and it's like, okay, now we have a hearing and we're not even talking about it yet and I don't want to be surprised at that. So I want to know the who, why. I mean, I think we all need to make an informed decision if that is true because I've done a lot of research on it already this week and I still have calls and people calling me telling me how important that position is as a liaison to all the public works department. So I'm very, very, very concerned about this. So I just don't want to be caught off guard is why I'm asking. I think we should, whatever, you know, whatever there is, we should have all mm -hmm. info that is necessary to make an important, uh, yeah, to make a decision. And that will definitely be presented in information at the finance meetings. Patrick? Uh, I have a question on number six. Now, I tried to make it to this uh, this meeting, but I just missed it. Um, and I was let in late. Um, the Fortnite Enterprise Firewall with five years uh, replacement and support by RMM, um, spending 17 thousand six hundred and eighty eight dollars and thirteen cents on a, a piece of hardware with a little bit of setup was this something that was bid out uh, to other companies or uh, how did this exactly go Tyler can explain and, and I have one follow-up question on that um, is there like a something that disallows the city buying a piece of hardware directly from uh, like I look online, you can buy one for $3,500. Um, just and Tyler's a smart guy; he could set it up, right? <laughs> um, so some some of the uh, to answer your first question, did we bid it out? Um, I bid it out to that con or the the RMM Solutions because we have a working relationship. Um, I've looked online. Um, the pricing is similar. You might be seeing a just the hardware appliance. A, a lot of the cost comes in the five years of maintenance. Um, so there's, I think the maintenance is, if I'm, I could be mistaken, 1,700 a year. So that receives updates, and you can um, essentially continue to use the product. Um, as far as the professional services. Uh, um, 
I have experience with uh, operating firewalls, but setting it up for, um, from scratch with this size of organization, with everything that we have going on, I don't have that much experience. Um, so to say that I could do it seamlessly, I, I, don't, I don't know if I could do that. Um, you know, so that's where the, the services from our RMM comes in. Does that answer your question? Okay, so you, you're saying that if I went out and purchased this $3,500 one that's online. Is it the same model? I'm, yep. I'm sorry. The 101F. Yep. Um, that, see, I'm just, you're saying that with the additional five years um, support. Next day replacement, support. Um, I could buy two and still be under. Seventeen thousand dollars. <laughs> I, I agree, um, but that I, I don't believe that you're you're seeing the or that uh, that's including the service and support next day uh, replacement all of that. Um, so yeah, I I would like to see if if you have that uh, information. If you have, I, I checked on CDW SHI. I reached out to my reps there. The pricing was very similar at from the hardware cost and then the licensing the five years. Um, very similar to what RMM uh, quoted. I actually um, had, I received a, an additional quote from RMM and I went back to them and I said, hey, here's the price that I got on these two sites, you know, can we get this closer? So they, we already had that conversation and they did cut it um, by, a, you know, I, I think it was like 800 bucks uh, from the original quote. So um, yeah, I, I did source it. Um, you know, I, I didn't get another vendor to quote out the services, um, but you know that, you know that was what what I had. So, does that answer your questions or? Yes, that answers my questions. Yep. Okay. And if you could send me, I would appreciate it if you could send me what you were looking at, uh, just just to check my math because I'm always open to, uh, <laughs> you know, people's feedback. So, yep. All right, any other questions? Seeing none, please cast your ballots. That motion carried seven A's, zero nays. We're on to the Public Works Committee report held, I'm sorry. I thought it said seven, seven A's, one day. Um, so a public works committee held on September 7th. Ms. Troston. Thank you, Mayor Blazer. The public works committee met on Tuesday, September 7th, 2021 in the Common Council Chambers and via remote video conference. Ryan Austin, Matt Zacker, and Patrick Delaney were in attendance. Others attending are on file in the clerk's office. Item number one was called to order. The meeting was called to order at 6.26 p.m. Item number two is review 8th Street State Municipal Agreement for the repaving of 8th Street South from the South City Limits to Whitrock Ave. Motion by Austin, second by Zachary to approve the State Municipal Agreement for the repaving of 8th Street South from the South City Limits to Whitrock Ave. Item number three, discuss and consider an ordinance creating chapter 51 and amending chapter six of the Wisconsin Rapids Municipal Code regarding creation of a transportation utility. Motion by Delaney, second by Zachary to create chapter 51 and amend chapter six as presented, removing section 51.13 and having the city engineer administrate the program to introduce the ordinance at the September Common Council meeting and take action at the October Common Council meeting Notice a specific public comment period at the September and October Common Council meetings and to eliminate special assessments for any projects where assessment hearings and final resolutions are outstanding at the time of the transportation utility is approved. Motion carried 3-0. Item 4, review 2022-2026 Public Works Construction CIP. The 2022-2026 Construction Public Works Construction CIP was reviewed. Item number five, consider preliminary resolution to reconstruct Oak Street from East Jackson to 16th Street South 2023 construction. Motion by Delaney, second by Austin to approve the preliminary resolution to reconstruct Oak Street from East Jackson Street to 16th Street for 2023 construction. Motion carried 3-0. 
Item six, consider allowing staff to review and approve bids for construction of railroad extension to serve Metallico. Motion by Austin, second by Zachary, to allow staff to review and approve bids for construction of railroad extension to serve Metallico. Motion carried 3-0. Item number seven, review proposals for soil borings uh, for emergency investigations on Washington Street, Apricot Street, and One Mile Creek Pond. Motion by Austin, second by Zachary, to accept the bid from AET for $11,865. Motion carried 3-0. Item number eight, review the DPW report, including an update on the A Street South Storm Sewer Repair. The report was reviewed. Item nine, review referral list. The referral list was reviewed and items number four and number seven were removed. And item number 10 was adjournment, motion by Zachary, second by Delaney to adjourn. With that, I'd like to make a motion to approve the report of the Public Works Committee. We have a motion by Austin, second by Rayom. Any discussion? Item B3, um, I know just talking with the ordinance tonight, we have some work to do, um, but just a couple different questions. I was just wondering, um, with the amendments made um, relating to the date of the meeting of September 7th, um, to remove section 51.13, I watched the meeting, I was getting out of, just out of the hospital, but um, I watched the meeting but I, I guess I was just, was the reason why we wanted to eliminate that um, because we felt that we didn't want city staff in public property? Anyone could expand on that, why we wanted to remove that? Um, and would city staff be, still be able to monitor and amend the trip calculations without being able to access that property? I don't know if Joe could ask that, answer that. Um, that's one of my questions. Uh, okay, so 51.13, it's actually been challenged uh, a lot. Um, thinking of Maluski v. Dover, which is actually a Wisconsin case that went all the way up to the Supreme Court and it upheld the rights of the property owner. Um, so what this basically is saying is if you have a, a disagreement with us, the city, we're going to get a, a warrant and we're going to come in and search your property. I think that's a huge overreach. I don't think it should be a part of this ordinance. Government overreach. And then I just have another question um, with the amendment um, referring it to the city engineer administrate the program. Um, hopefully this isn't a political move with the public works director, but just asking, um, so you, you want the city engineer to administer the program. And I was just wondering, um, has anyone asked the engineering department? I mean, I know that's a part of public works, but the trans utility is obviously huge. Do they have the time and staff to do this without someone else? Um, that's another question I have. Why, why it was decided the city engineer would do it instead of the public works director, I guess. I guess I'm just asking who why why the committee decided to change that and if there's any reasons why if so they could let me know what if it was a bad good uh what was the reasoning behind that i can kind of take this a little bit it, it was discussed um that a lot of this stuff would most likely be delegated to the engineering department regardless so in in our eyes why not make them the the, the tip of the spear Okay, and were they asked at all, do you know? If they had the staff in time to do that, or did we just direct that it would be there? Mr. Joe Terry was in, in attendance of this meeting and he did not have any disagreements with handing it over to city engineering, so I assume they have the staff. I guess that'd be a better question for Joe. Commissioner? 
yeah, she still has the floor. Unless you have a response, but I, I'm sure Ms. Evanson still has the floor. Mm -hmm. She still has the oh, floor. She, okay. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, it it was put in as that it'd be under the public works director. That's how it was. Was if my memory is correct, that's how it was. Um, that evening, it was. Uh, brought up um, to go with the uh, city engineer. Um, personally, I don't agree with that, uh, but uh, with the director of public works, um, I guess, to me anyway, the, bo the bottom line is something like that, that's where the buck or whatever would stop. I mean, that's, you know, you got heads of different departments or whatever, but you have a head over it all. So who makes the call? So, uh, But that uh, change came up uh, that night during the meeting. Um, so uh, the uh, department did not uh, suggest that to my recollection. I guess that's a, that's a comment they have. And then I have another question um, relating to the transportation utility. Um, and I don't remember discussing this or hearing anything on that. So we wanted to, I believe, Joe, correct me, is it 1.79 million, I think something like that, um, for the budget, and then the 450,000 was the plus that we were adding in, or no, 450,000 is what we had to cover for special assessments. And then we did the plus to add some money in, was that the resurfacing? Yes, there okay. was a scenario two plus, plus yeah. minus that, yes, so the, there's the street reconstruction, approximately about 1.7 million, and then there was the street surfacing component, which was 450,000. Okay. And so I guess I was just kind of confused. I know listening to the public comments tonight about, you know, the small businesses, you know, and I mean, like I said, there's no good, no one wants to pay more for anything, but like Tom um, Rayom was ex explaining, I mean, the roads are deteriorating. We need to do something. But what happens if the utility falls short? You know, I, I mean, we, you, with all the calculations, dividing all that money out, divided by the 7,400 businesses, landowner use, whatever, um, if, if the city gets smaller and smaller, businesses close, there's more vacant properties, you know, and now we are expecting, you know, McDonald's, I mean, I doubt that would happen, McDonald's will shut down, but I'm just saying, so we're looking at, you know, thousands of dollars a month, and if a business closes, now that's vacant, the user fee is still there, but that money is not coming into the utility. So what happens if more people move out of the city or businesses close? and the budget or the utility falls short, would we just borrow then that money that's not in there? Or, you know, would recalculation need to be done? You know, oh, now everyone's going to pay more because of X, Y, and Z. I mean, how, I mean, I know it's all in the future if it happens or not, but what, ha what would happen? So initially, the, my understanding is that year one would would largely be operating on um, bonds um, so that revenues can be accrued um, through the collection of fees uh, but thereafter yes I guess there's there's a, a few things that could be done um, you know the rates would be reviewed annually and adjusted as necessary um, in addition 
if the fees are collected in advance of the, the, uh, the expenses, that um, there's always some, some cushion there, I guess some uh, reserve funds that could be set up. Uh, if it's a, um, you know, so that reserve fund can kind of level out the, the ups and downs and the variations in, in the accounts that change over time. If it's an extended duration uh, where there's continued loss year after year after year, well, eventually, you know, some major changes would have to be considered um, as with any utility that, that functions currently. Um, I mean, I, that, that would be a sad thing to see, but um, certainly that would, there's avenues to, to review that and, and adjust as necessary. Thank you. I have one more question. I promise I'll be quiet. Um, as far as um, in the ordinance 5103, the transportation utility fund, and I and I read it and read it and read it, and I don't know how I missed this, but I did take quite a few calls, people that were in agreement with the transportation utility, except the one point, which is G. Um, the structures used for the storage, maintenance, and repair of transportation related op um, operational equipment. Um, many phone calls were relating to that specifically. Um, worried that, you know, we, we want this transportation utility because our roads need help. Um, so that was the basis of this. Well, originally, the original basis was for special assessments, and then we added on. But I guess I'm kind of concerned with this as well, um, because, I mean, I know it's budget and department head use, but who decides what the utility is going to be made for? I mean, what if, okay, we have 1.79 million whatever in there. Oh, city garage needs to be repaired, so we're spending all that on, on a garage, versus, and now the roads sit. You know, I guess I'm really concerned with that, and I don't know if I'd really want that in, in there at all. Um, because the point of it is the transportation utility for roads and special assessments, not for storage um, or repair of transportation-related operational equipment. I would think that that would be um, an operational expense that we always borrow for anyways. So I really don't like it in the transportation utility. I don't know what anyone else's views are on that. Thank so, you. I don't know, Joe, you want? Just, just a couple. Quick comments on it. Um, I guess you know, as far as authority of the council over the utility, you know, every, everything, you know, full authority of the council over the utility remains as it is. Um, you know, with any of the other uh, aspects that are under um, the council's jurisdiction, and, and from staff level, it would be recommended. Ex uh, capital type projects and expenses through the utility budgeting process uh, and planning process either through the CIP or other uh, other budgets that are being prepared and proposed and then subsequently approved um, that would be reviewed at the council and so I guess with you saying that I guess I was confused why that would be in there because that would be a capital improvement project I wouldn't want to see it come out of the transportation utility Thank you. Uh, Mr. Thacker. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, actually, the 51071 is basically mm -hmm. stating the what the utility could be. Um, all of the and all of these things would be appropriate uses of for the utility, but your table A is what's going to determine what uses or, or I'm sorry what costs are included and so that's something that you the council would decide each year as Joe said through your capital improvements plan through budgeting what items would be included it's it's more expansive in the definitions in the event that you would want to put some of those into the utility but it's not uh, what's listed in 51071 is just is saying uh, these are the types of things that could, but you are going to decide, it's my understanding, pretty much year to year, right, what costs are all going to be in Table A. 
Uh, if you don't want the cap, the, a new garage to be in there, then that's not going to be in there. But you're going to be in control of that each, each year. Thank you. I guess I just worried. Like I said, I, I took a number of calls on it. I mean, we might not all be here in 20 years. Who knows? And so sometimes a good thing goes wrong. And I just hate to see, oh, it's in there. We can do it. You know, and now our streets aren't getting done. And, you know, they got a fancy garage. And I mean, I'm not saying we take advantage of that, but it's just something I guess I'm really worried about. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Zack. And you're gone. <laughs> Any further discussions? Seeing none. Oh, sorry, Mr. Delaney. You're quick. Um, I would still like to address the $150 uh, fee. Don't know when the appropriate time to do that would be, um, but I think that if the city makes a mistake and that it shouldn't cost the. I mean, does anybody think that's fair? Nobody. So, so would the appropriate way to do is hold out the item, or this isn't a final reading. So. Right. I would say at the time, at, when the when the ordinance is going to be voted on, that that's the time that you would request an amendment to that part? Um, well, I would like discussion about it too. I'm not saying that right now, like mm -hmm. five years from now, it might not be appropriate, but like right now, I don't feel that's appropriate to, um, with something brand new like that, I'm sure that there may be mistakes and I don't think that we should um, penalize somebody just because we made a mistake. I think, Part of it, I mean, it, yeah, is we don't, I guess we don't want 7,000 appeals if it doesn't cost anything. It's, you know, I think there's a little bit of that, too. I, I'm not oh. saying that we're making it cost prohibitive, but um, I, you know, perhaps there's something that if the appeal is, you know, not sustained, that the money goes back or something. I, you know, I, that's something, I guess, to consider. We can maybe look for some language if that's. Something you're looking for and bringing back the next time it comes back. Sue explained that very well because I, I believe that was the reason why, um, when I remember talking about that, is they didn't want 7,400 people all coming in because it, it'd be crazy. Um, but I agree. If, if it finds that um, the city was incorrect in, in categorizing it, they should maybe get their money back. I would, I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. We'll get some appropriate language presented for you for the next time. So we have a motion and a second. If I don't see any further discussion, please cast your ballots. That motion carried eight A's, zero nays. We are on to the Human Resource Committee held September 7th. Mr. Bemke. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Human Resource Committee was held on Tuesday, September 7th, 2021 at 2.30 um, in the council chambers. Um, members present were Bemke and Veneman. Alder person Evenson was excused. Um, also present, Mayor Blazer, City Attorney Schill, Brian Hartman, and Tyler Mickelson. Um, item number one, meeting was called to order at 2.32 p.m. Item two was to discuss and consider for approval of the proposed position of community development administrative technician. There was a motion by Veneman, second by Bemke, to approve the position of community development administrative technician as presented. Motion carried 2-0. Item number three, discuss plan for the future COVID-19 policies, protocols in the event that they are needed, discussion, and no action was taken. Item number four, motion by Bemke, second by Veneman to go into closed section under, session under section 19851E, Wisconsin stats, which reads, deliberating or negotiating the purchasing of public properties, the investing of public funds, or conducting of other specified bu public business whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session. A roll call vote was taken with Bemke and Veneman voting in the affirmative. Motion carried two to zero. 
A, in closed session, the committee discussed negotiations and bar bargaining strategy regarding labor negotiations with IAFF and WRPPA. Item five, motion by Veneman, second by Bemke to adjourn in closed session. Motion carried to zero. The meeting was adjourned at 315, and with that, I will submit this for approval. So I have a motion and a second. She, she won. <laughs> she won the button or. Um, Mr. Delaney. I'm just wondering if we can come up with some sort of matrix for our emergency use thing that comes up every month. I'm fine with uh, what I, I can understand the reasons behind it, especially with the mayor that we have. I'm just wondering if we can have some logic behind it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, no, that's good. Um, I'm just wondering if we can have some logic behind it. Um, the mayor said that this, you know, each council is self-governing, um, but we're also setting a bad precedent by just not having a uh, set of numbers. I'm not saying that it's not real, like Mr. Rayom had implied last month, wondering if there's something that we can do to put together uh, to like what is an emergency what dictates an emergency it's not a feeling it's, it has to be something that can be um, put on paper sure so let me ask you a question when you say numbers which numbers are you talking about well this is all about COVID-19 correct okay. I, yeah, I understand that but are we talking about the number of cases the number of cases within the city. Uh, what are we talking about? Yeah, well, even if we just went off from Wood County numbers, because this is, you know, the hub of Wood County. Right. So, so if we just went off from Wood County numbers. You want to come up, Ryan? Are you looking for, like, if it gets to a certain number, it initiates this? I think or... that we have a really great set of minds here, and with everybody putting their heads together, that we could come up with something that we all agree up on is an emergency and not just basing it off from uh, fear or an emotion, something concrete that you can look at and say, oh, yeah, we're definitely in emergency right now. So maybe if, sorry about that, maybe Ryan could explain um, his contacts with the health department, um, what we're doing as we're looking at the numbers, maybe just run through some of the discussions that we've had. Um, I, I assure you, we're not in full panic mode here. Uh, hard hard fast numbers I don't think we want to assign something to that but maybe Ryan you can just describe kind of what you're doing uh, you and your staff are doing to keep up on these numbers and relationship with the Wood County Health Department please sure uh, thank you um, <clears throat> so we have in our monthly HR committee uh, meeting we talk about where the status is with current trends or current numbers with the COVID um, situation that's occurring in the pandemic. Uh, to continue um, probably every other day. I'm updating the mayor. He can correct me if I'm wrong. As far as uh, I prefer to go to two different sites, COVID Act Now, and then also the Wood County Health Department. And I will update him on percent positives within the county. Um, municipalities that are being more heavily hit um, and we also uh, look at the school districts that are being hit um, or increasing or decreasing or staff we, the staff and then lastly right and that's a uh, we do update on numbers of staff obviously not names um, and departments and watching that you know for instance um, Police Chief Blevins is here. You know, if we have situations going on, we'll be in constant contact with that, kind of watching a trend or possible potential exposures. Going back to when I just started a year ago, or just over a year ago, I prefer the method that was used last time with the emergency um, declaration or be, having the ability, because if something were to pop up, um, un, something unforeseen, you know, you know, heaven forbid the uh, police department really gets hit hard. Um, what's our plan going to be, or can the mayor execute whatever it is um, at that point in time? 
we may not have a week or two weeks or whatever it is to call a meeting, have that meeting, and go through that discussion. Um, we're working on, I stepped out earlier, working on a couple of situations that just popped up from the time of the start of this meeting to, um, you know, right now where I am, am now. But I think we are, the city itself, the city, um, the organization of the city of Wisconsin Rapids itself is doing a very good job of managing it. Um, I'm in contact with Chairperson Bemke, uh, along with the HR committee meetings as far as how's it going, where are we at? There are things we could do better, obviously, um, as far as numbers go or metrics. I think that might be difficult to set based on who we want to listen to. You know, if you listen to one one section, they're going to say, you know, we should be masking and, and doing other things a long, long time ago. If we're looking at, we think we are maybe self-managing in a, in a good way, which is what we're doing now. We're taking it day by day. Um, we've had pretty um, blunt discussions where you know we've agreed to disagree on certain things, um, and and we just go as a whole what's best for um, the city of Wisconsin Rapids organization as a whole. So, does that help uh, with all my ramblings of what I did as far as the constant communication we're having? So, how did this start last month? when we were about when you guys ended it as far as cases like why did this all of a sudden get up and are we going to be in a perpetual state of emergency if that's the case you know whatever but i think it's just poor management and poor policy to um, have something that is just based on what like you can't point to anything within the organization of our employees, uh, less than 10 out of over 200. Ryan, if I may, sorry. Good. Well. What, what is the percentage of cases with employees at all right now? Or, I mean, have you seen an influx at all? Uh, a couple weeks ago, there was a, a small um, tick up. Uh, I was um, very um, leery of what the complete week after Labor Day would have been with school just starting and then Labor Day occurring and everybody having the ability to go where they want it and then come back and put everybody back together in mass environments. We've been very fortunate here at the city. Um, we've seen small upticks, but not um, as damaging as a year ago. Um, that said, I think there are things that we could be doing and, and we'll be having, you know, we have these continual discussions um, of remote work. You know, when's going to be the time to say to go to, to remote work or we do recommend masking. Okay, so we do recommend masking the, the, the sanitation uh, stations or sanitizer stations are out there. So we're trying to keep those at the forefront. You know, remote work is probably going to be another um, topic here shortly. Uh, but then you have many other groups. Uh, again, I apologize for Chief Blevins being the example because he's here tonight, but the police department are essential personnel. They don't have that opportunity. Uh, fire department, same, and uh, street department, DPW. Um, not all of them have that ability, but we may be getting to a point where we're looking at, or when that po point in time comes, to say, well, if we can mitigate in these certain areas, there's going to be a time to do it and we just have to you know make that that right call at the right time so do you see a larger number of people masking employees within city hall no okay mr veneman i'm sorry patrick were you done 
Okay, thank you. Yeah, I guess I just wanted to point out that what we're talking about here is is completely different than the monthly thing that we're. This is the city of Wisconsin Rapids employee base and staff, whereas the monthly renewal that we do each month is for the city of Wisconsin Rapids itself, the residents. Am I correct in that assumption? It it could be, it really could be either. I mean, I think we've mostly used it as an internal, you know, for internal matters, uh, time off for employees, uh, masking requirements, remote work, uh, things like extension of vacation from last year into this year to, because some people couldn't take that. So um, I think there's been limited external emergency actions that have been taken. Um, but it, you know, basically the emergency declaration says to do whatever's necessary for the pandemic. And I guess that's up for question of of what that means and obviously as the state that's been done and litigated and what what that means and for how long and and uh but it's you know i would say most of the cities that i'm familiar with definitely have done that did this for a period of time some had stopped some are never stopped um and it's the type of thing i guess that's there if you need it. I don't think there's been any actions taken since last month that you need to confirm or anything like that. So, uh, but, you know, it could have, something could happen quickly where the mayor, you know, wants to take action regarding closing of buildings or uh, uh, things like that. So, uh, you know, it's really, obviously with the technology that we have and the ability to get the council together, maybe it's not as pressing of an issue as it maybe it was years ago when you couldn't get the council together and certain things had to happen. And I think the mayor has, you know, pretty much uh, told you to the extent that he can, he would involve you in decisions. And, and even when you were in the emergency uh, declaration, any actions that he takes would be, could be confirmed by you or amended or modified or terminated. So, um, but yeah, it, it's, I would say it's more of an internal, um, Thing, but it could be could be external, and, and I, I probably would recommend that if it is external, it's probably something, and he would probably agree. He would want all of you to oh, yeah. decide versus <laughs> versus him. Yeah, that's I, I would agree. It, it, definitely, anything external, we would be on a Zoom call at at a minimum. But uh, can I just? Can I just add one more thing, Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I think, and does the, if I remember correctly, when we worked on the emergency paid leave policy going back to last year when I had just first come on board, um, and that kind of, I think, stemmed off of this whole uh, approach, that came in very handy um, because we, uh, our original intent when I first talked to the HR committee was we don't want any employees, number one, coming to work sick or ill, um, being able to take care of their family. And what we did to offset that was if you don't feel good, maybe you don't have sick or vacation, but they were gonna come into work because they needed the paycheck to pay the bills. So that's where I really saw success from the HR committee and from this policy or from this emergency leave policy and, and the declaration, having the ability to do it to say, we're gonna do a set of 80 hours for, it kind of all started with the FFCRA and then it went through from there, but then we did a reset a couple times because we had multiple instances going back to that, that terrible time of last year where we had employees that were out of everything and what could they use or utilize? And I remember um, the HR committee saying the last thing we want is an employee potentially thinking they're going to lose their job based on the, uh, off of this pandemic. And, and that's really where I saw that, this whole plan kind of come to fruition and that's why I'm uh, somewhat of a, a, a big proponent of it. So thank you. Thank you. Um, Yeah, I thought he was okay. I knocked him off. Sorry. 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 Wasn't intentional, I hope. <laughs> Come on. Uh, my concern is that we're not all involved or as close to the daily operations as the mayor is. 
And if it did come to a point where action was needed to be taken, we might have great technology for that. But if it's a meeting of a whole and we don't have a quorum, then would we even be able to take action? I just think it makes much more sense to renew this every month and have the mayor make those decisions as he's inside the organization daily here and can make those communications much easier than us all gathering as a full council. And also, I guess, just if something does happen, I'll make sure to send out a, a, an email to all of you to let you know, hey, we got this going on. I made this decision. And just to keep you informed so it's not a surprise or you don't find out till the next council meeting. Uh, Mr. Zacker. Thank you, Mayor Blazer. Uh, I think I understand what Mr. Delaney's kind of getting at is it's not necessarily about Shane and it's not anything against what's going on. It's setting a precedence for in the future what what can be taken out of context or, you know, let's say we don't have a mayor that loves his community as much as Mr. Blazer does. Like, are there any ways of just putting limitations on or when do you start it? When do you stop it? And, and what are the limitations of what they can do um, just for the whole, I'm pretty sure what we're talking about is like civil, civil liberties and rights and, and all that kind of stuff. Like we don't just want to give a blanket uh, statement. But again, I, I do realize you guys are putting in the work and making it all happen and we appreciate that. So it's not a, a cut in that sense. I think it's just uh, being cautious. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Hill. Thank you. Yeah, I think it's uh, an important thing to have. I think it's. Uh, uh, I think that it's important that we stay on top of what's going on. And if something has to be made quick, that it can be made quick. Uh, if things have to be made. In, di in different departments or something that it can be done. Um, I know I think we all got, or at least uh, I think we all got it, I don't remember how, but uh, anyway, the Wood County had their trailer over in the parking lot here. It was supposed to be through the 17th, I believe. It was extended through the 24th. I don't know if that's been extended or not, but you know, there has been the uptick, uptick in the area and whatnot, uh, you know, in here in the city uh, organization, uh, you know, maybe not so much so, but it is, if you take this as the city, uh, the organization, and then you got the city that we are the organization, organization of, there's the uptick. So it's, you know, it's, it's there. And I, to me, I think it's to be, uh, Prepared for what there is, what's there. So listen to the health departments. You know, uh, numbers that there are, uh, cases in that. What's going on? Uh, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a doctor. I listen to those that are, uh, and that's where I try to come from with my recommendations on some of this stuff. Uh, in that they know those things, they know more than I do. And that's why then we make a decision on certain things. And so I think it's important that we have uh, whatever tools. It's not uh, something that I look at to uh, take any um, rights away or anything like that. But it's that we are prepared to, if something were to happen, that tools are there for something to have uh, be put into motion right away. So we don't have to wait that few days or whatever to get us together or whatever it would have to be. That something can be done. So I, I just think it's something that um, to have that there, hopefully we wouldn't have to use it, but it's also something that I think it's, uh, you know, it's something that's there, and we could have a long discussion on 
of what we think about it or whatever but uh maybe we'll have that some night but uh it's a uh, it's a uh, thing that hopefully if we can ever get a handle on it you know it may not go away but at least that the handle will be there and so it'll be more like something else that we can work with it um, but right now with what we're in it just as long as it keeps going like it is it keeps mutating and mutating and mutating and it's a to me it's a scary thing uh, for me personally but also um, for me in the sense that uh, I have kids I have grandkids I had a new grandkid five weeks ago. They keep multiplying on me. And you know, so it's, it's not just for me. And um, that's part of where I come from on this is that uh, I don't want to take somebody's rights away, but it's also that uh, there are rights of everybody. Um, that, and I'll just use an example that if somebody doesn't want to get vaccinated or whatever, I guess maybe that is their choice. But I also have a right to live. And that by them not getting that is not my rights being violated. So it's a very interesting subject that we've been put into here in the last year and a half and more. I think it was failed at the start and I just think it's something that we have to keep in place. I wish we didn't have to, but for now I think we do. And it's uh, just something, it's a tool there. And if something can change, if there's a different something we can do, I'm all for listening to it if somebody has something to put in its place or something to add to it. So it's just, uh, um, you know, it's, we're going to be battling this for quite a while yet, it appears to me. <laughs> and I'm listen to the experts on it, and I make decisions of my own on what I listen to. So, but with that, let that go. So. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Mr. Beck. Okay, so we just heard an emotional plea. Hold on. Mr. Bemke is next, and then you're next. I'm sorry. Yeah, go okay. ahead, Pat. So we just heard an emotional plea about how he's scared and stuff. I don't think policy should be made upon, um, upon emotions, either happy, sad, fear, whatever. Um, I can honestly understand where he's coming from. Um, as far as him recommending the vaccine for people, I don't think that's really appropriate. Um, but I do know a lot of people that I, it's a real thing. I know more people vaccinated that have died of COVID-19 than people unvaccinated. I know a lot of people unvaccinated that got it. Thank you, Mr. Bebke. Thank you. Not to drag this out, but a couple things. One, I don't think we're setting any precedents here. I, I just, so am I wrong about that? I mean, it's, it's a thing that we, no. we look at every month we have the ability to either renew it or stop it, correct? Um, so, and I guess the other thing is, is a fresh set of eyes on this. When we're open to suggestions, honestly, if you would like to sit down either with Ryan or Ryan and myself and go through the policy and if there's things that you think we can improve on and make changes to, um, we're just here to make sure we can all get through this and get through it together. That's our goal, so thank you. 
Thank you. What a great discussion on a non-action item. <laughs> the best one of the night. Any further discussion? Seeing none, uh, please cast your ballots for the HR report. <laughs> yeah, right, HR. That motion carried eight A's, zero nays. We are on to item number 11, which is reports of other committees, commission, and boards, and departmental reports. Questions, comments, what are your wishes? We have a motion by Bemke, second by Katna. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, please cast your ballots. That motion carried, eight A's, zero nays. Item 12 is referral to committees. Anybody have any referrals to committees? Seeing none, okay. We're on to item 13, which is adjournment. Uh, we can do a voice vote on this. Um, I entertain a motion. We have a motion by Riom. Second by Zacher. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? That motion carries. Thank you everybody for participating, hanging in there. Josh wins the award tonight for citizen uh, making it through the whole meeting. <laughs>